Hello, Whale fam. Welcome. Uh, thanks for being here. I'm really excited to have the amazing Ali Sabet here with me. What's um, happening? <laughs> thank you for being here. It's an honor to have you. Um, also here with us is Nightmare for support. And yes, we were we were so excited about this one. We had to bring out two of the whale uh, moderators <laughs> here to host this one. The high high potency stuff here. Um, yes. Truly, truly, truly honored. And thank you guys for having me. And thank you for both being here. This is going to be fun. Awesome. So um, yeah, let's just get right into it. Uh, my first question for you is uh, you, I see you've had a lot of past lives um, that used to work in advertising as an art director. Mm -hmm. um, I've also lived that life personally. Yeah. <laughs> and um, that you actually opened your own uh, branding agency at one point. Um, so how did you end up in the world of NFTs and what was that experience like? Oh man, uh, so I feel like I've always been in the world of NFTs or I've been preparing for it for 25 years or so. Uh, yeah, I started in the ad agency business. I graduated from Cal State Fullerton in 1998, I'm basically aging myself here, but it was a long time ago. And uh, from there, they I got an internship while I was in school for at Bozell Advertising, which I ended up doing a ton of work on like Kawasaki, AirTouch, Taco Bell, all that stuff uh, for about nine months. And then uh, they told me I needed to leave because they weren't paying me. So when I left, I ended up starting to work for a sister company, Focona Building, which was purely Taco Bell. That's where I learned actually how to design. So I did everything from menus and in-store stickers and all the fun stuff you see when you go to the fast food chain restaurant. Uh, but I also learned all my design skills there, production. I, I have never had a design design class or an art class. Actually, I had one illustration class in college and I got a D. I just remember the teacher going, why? Like, what? <laughs> why <are you?" laughs> that's, a, that's like unbelievable to me. This right. is, that, that's like Jordan getting cut from his JV team or something there. <laughs> and um, yeah, so I worked at uh, FCB or Draft, it's called now. Both agencies I were top five. And wow. were you there? Were you at draft? I, I almost had a freelance gig there. I said no to them. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> it's awesome. wild. Uh, yeah. They, they basically let me go after nine months because I had a lot of anxiety and I couldn't sit still. And I thought a creative, all they did was play darts and dance around in the hallways. And that wasn't working. Uh, so the, one day the CD came in and he's like, you got to go. And I think I cried. And then they let me go. And uh, I basically went and started my own agency. I realized advertising wasn't for me because it was like, how many times am I going to say 99 some burritos on a billboard? And that wasn't exciting. And so I, I did have a knack for identity work, uh, naming companies, branding them, creating logos. So I really dove deep into getting really good at identity work. And uh, also, uh, you know, brand strategy, positioning, things that like big companies were doing. So I would look at the big companies and then I would emulate it for the small companies, little cell phone shacks, little restaurants, home, you know, around my house. And that grew into something a lot bigger over time. Uh, the first three years, I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't know how to deal with people. I was just trying to make ends meet and that's not a way to run a business. So I suffered a lot, uh, but I ended up doing a lot of good work. So. 25 years of branding, uh, you know, I've done everything from social networks. Like uh, I created the branding for Flippogram. I don't know if you guys remember it, but it got pretty big really quickly. Then it was sold off and eventually became TikTok. So yeah, <laughs> kind of a weird story. Uh, other, again, I'm going to talk if you guys don't stop me. <laughs> so I'm gonna, Please keep going. This you're is, okay I'm, with that? I'm riveted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, this is 1999. And on the side, so I've always had sidetracks. The sidetrack was I always had one foot out the door ever since I was a little kid. I wanted to be like the next Hello Kitty, like 15 years old. I'm walking into the Sanrio stores and I thought that was success. You know, I would look at these little cute things and I think 
uh, you know, I, I miss those stores so I, much. I love them. The little they thing, were so thing, amazing. Little gifts you would get with it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny you say that because when I was looking at your Pixel Pop project, that's the uh-huh. first thing I thought of. And my my wife is from Flushing, Queens, New York, which is uh-huh. um, basically one of the largest Chinatowns in the United States. Oh my god! And I just I just I saw that art style and immediately was taken back there. Yeah, that's that's you know that's my Sanrio like fetish when I was a kid. I even, I, I call it the Hello Kitty complex. And I think almost everyone has one. I own hellokittycomplex.com. One day I'll write a book <laughs> <laughs> about the importance of character design and history and, and just, you know, our, our society in general. Uh, so anyways, two, this is like 1999. I'm doing these little characters called Tenoshi twins on the side. And then I get laid off and I start doing design work, but to keep saying I was still doing those, and I would put them on t-shirts, I would build websites. I'm like, this is it, this is my way out. And I would end up like completely broke and selling t-shirts from the back of my car just to pay for gas money and food. I mean, I could have gone back home, but who wants to do that, right? Uh, so that was kind of like the beginning of, of Pixel Pop. It was not called Pixel Pop, but at the time, everything starts out being called like the Sabit character world and it was, then it was 2004, it was Snooki, S-N-O-O-K-I. I still have the website. I think if you pull it up, the old characters are there. Um, uh, no E.com. So that was, that's pretty, yeah, not her. <laughs> <laughs> and then she ruined it, so I had to change the name. I can uh, see why you rebranded that one. <laughs> uh, and, I let the, and I let the website expire. Well, so anyways, well, uh, well, over time, basically, it became Pixel Pop. Uh, 2010, it became Pixel Pop. But before that happened, in 2005, I was really, really like, I'm like, nobody's helping me. This isn't working. I'm not a business guy. What am I going to do? I came up with the idea of creating a social network for character designers. And I'm like, if I build something where other character designers who are suffering like me come over, then maybe I'll get noticed. So, and randomly that same week, somebody messaged me and they were a venture capitalist. Just, you know, everything kind of happens in my life in a weird way. They ended up being in Irvine, which was a block away in my city. And they were a block away from my office. And uh, I went in and I said, this is my idea. And they're like, what do you want? I said, I want 50% of the company and $20,000 a month. Now, mind you, I was broke. I was completely broke. <laughs> and I was like on the verge of like falling apart. And I walk in and they're like, well, we'll give you five grand a month and we'll do the idea with you. I packed my shit. I walked out of the room. I said, the idea alone is worth more than that. Good Eventually, yeah, I don't know how. I mean, there was something moving me, you know, there was something kind of, it wasn't just, it wasn't me. It was like a the, force. The intuition that you can't ignore it. Yeah, I'm like, I yeah. can't. I just packed up and left and made a deal. It was like 10 grand a month, uh, 40% of the company, which was amazing for a startup with nothing other than a screenshot. And uh, I looked in the Japanese dictionary. I found out that the word character, this is pre iPhone, guys, 2005. So uh, here's another crazy story that. You guys can probably look up and find out it's true. Uh, I looked up the word for character and I made a mistake. A little cute character in Japanese is A. Instead, I found the word moji, which means A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Is, those are characters. And I oh. called it Moji Zoo, M O J I Z U. If you Google Moji Zoo right now, the site got so big that there is a ton of the beautiful characters that my emoji zoo m-o-j-i-z-u one word and no party go to images i don't know where the word party came from it's uh, just, no, it's i just, guess because we're having a party i yeah. guess right what, now what are you this, googling over there heather this is emoji zoo <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> Mojizu party. This, is- so this was this was the second iteration of Mojizu when I tried to relaunch it after my partners destroyed it. Uh, oh. It became a huge, huge deal. Uh, we had fifty thousand character artists, beautiful characters. We had licensing opportunities for the characters, and uh, it just became a big deal. Uh, and if you go back, I think you'll see a lot more. That's like see. No, just go back on the, yeah, just back. Yeah. So you can Ah. see kind of, kind of that's Stitch Money and Friends. I mean, these, so you can see like how Mojizu was primed to be an NFT site, essentially. And Mm. that was my plan. So first we were making like 
different products with them, t-shirts, backpacks, things like that. And so then cool. splitting it with the, with the, um, with the people, you know, with the artists. And then eventually the idea was that Mojizu was going to turn into a place where these characters, like if you go, these are all screenshots that are left over. The site's been gone for probably 10, 12 years. Wow. And, uh, but the, the essence of the site is, is still there. And so we, you would be able to basically buy, sell, trade these cards. So this is 2005, six. So we're talking what? Can't even calculate it anymore. Uh, 16 years ago? A while ago. <laughs> yeah, like, I can't remember. 15, 16. Yeah, 16 yeah. years ago. So we, we had it up and running and, uh, it was a it was a really powerful site. The people, I mean, these these guys, a lot of them. I ran into one on Clubhouse that remembered Mojizu, oh. uh, and basically the first Moji application was also something I developed called the MojiCon dispenser. So you know you can probably find that too somewhere. And basically what? Yeah, EmojiCon dispenser. That was the first emoji app essentially, but it was web based, right? So you would have like those little thingies on your on your browser and then you could use them there it is and then you could pull in these little characters <laughs> into your iphone and not iphone so there was cute. there was oh, no iPhone. look you can still download it that's <laughs> crazy <laughs> yeah, all these ads. yeah. Keep so, great. very spammy um oh so yeah gosh. this was this was how you could I use these characters thing. in your emails and and these were all like fresh emojis hot emojis and and then there was a battle it was really fun <laughs> uh lasted about a year and you see the quality of the characters were great we yeah. were kind of, we were kind of curated um and, but the only curation i want i, I asked this. people was white background in a square format that's all i wanted and most people listened even if you had a stick figure it looks great on a background you know white yeah. background yeah long story short uh partners don't see the potential which is crazy because 10 years later we would have been probably had a million characters like this and we would have turned it yeah. into an nft site um, I mean, is it too late for that? To bring it back, I well, all the characters are gone. We don't have rights to them anymore, and I oh. just have my partners gave me the name, uh, the name and the domain name back. So I have a hundred percent ownership. So I could start it if there's a partner out there that wants to do it again. Mm -hmm. I know how to bring artists in. I know how to onboard, which I'm doing a lot with a lot of my friends into the NFT space. Uh, but one of the things that Mojizu did was. I was trying to be a like be known as the character guy, you know, have Pixel Pop, which it wasn't Pixel Pop at the time, uh, into something, and instead I became the community guy. So I was mm. leading a community, and and I was missing something still. And then when Mojizu went down, you know, lost a house, cars, whatever. I thought I was going to do really well afterwards, wow. and I overextended myself, being like 28, 29, and silly. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to be a millionaire.com, you know. Mm. And that didn't work out. So I went back to design work. I gave up on the character stuff for a while until 2010. So like basically 2005, I started painting. So I started actually painting on canvas and people were like, oh my God, you look, you know, it looks like Basquiat. I'm like, no, it's just messy. And uh, because I have a lot of stuff going on, a lot of anxiety, suffering, pain, whatever. And that kind of moved on. To, so 2005 to seven, seven Mojizu dies but I have a lot of paintings now because when I started getting paid, I'm like, I don't need to have design work anymore. I'll paint. I'm a yeah. painter now. <laughs> so moving on to 2007, eight, nine design work, doing better, picking up. And then 10, I decide I got to do something out of love. And that's when pixel pop was born again. And that's the name mm. at that time I had the name, but I finally applied it to pixel pop and Instagram was also born at that time. So from 2010 to about 2012, I just kept going with pixel pop characters, but this time I drew them. I didn't put them in the computer mm. and I didn't brand it and I didn't package it. I just did it and naturally organically. And I created a community around it. People started tattooing it, drawing it, putting it on their nails worldwide. It became kind of a thing. And I realized all I was missing was an audience. I didn't care if I had the stores or the money or whatever mm. i was a frustrated artist needing to get out and then i started painting the girls uh, my wife kept kind of nudging me to she would see like something cute in one of my messy paintings and oh that's pretty you know you should do more of that like she was reminding <laughs> me that she did this to me I, I don't remember it but that's what she said she did and uh, <laughs> but i do remember her not allowing the the other paintings in the house 
Oh. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but my friends loved them. They would have me like paint a ton of shit. The second one is on this wall here. I'll send you guys a picture. Um, yeah. And so from there, from basically 2005 to 10, and then 10, I start doing the pixel pop stuff. Then I start drawing the girls. And then I'm getting hit up by my friends going, hey, why are you putting these girls or these other stuff on to your Instagram, uh, Pixel Pop Instagram? Mm -hmm. It doesn't fit. Remember branding? I'm like, yeah. But I know. like it. So yeah. it's well, still they, me. <laughs> they were saying like, it's not yeah. Pixel Pop, which was my goal was to become like Hello right. Kitty kind of thing. And it was off brand. And so I started Sob it, uh, at Sobit. And I found myself more and more, I'm like, people love the work. It was adults. There was actually a market, it seemed like. And I'm like, I kind of started outgrowing Pixel Pop in a way. And I'm like, ooh, I don't need to draw little bunnies anymore to be loved, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Yay, I can draw girls now. And, and I started drawing these women and uh, other things and then i started layering and i you know 2015 comes around and i said i gotta be a painter full time mm. and i'm like the only way that's gonna happen is if i paint every day and so i would leave the house and i would take a bunch of painting tools sit in a coffee shop that i had been doing design work for 20 years and <laughs> i painted every day for four or five hours people coming around didn't matter i was just painting and uh sharing and i think i sold my first pretty large print uh in 2015 and that's when i kind of started also figuring out the spiritual aspects of it without knowing so mm. be before we move on to that because i'm sure that that's going to be quite the the rabbit hole to go down oh, absolutely. Um, a, cu a couple questions on that because i find it interesting we talk about authenticity a lot with artists that are trying yes. to get involved with nfts and um you know, you, you kind of allude to it there that for some time you were trying to package yourself as something and achieve a very, you know, a narrow perspective uh, as far as what would be successful for you, right? You wanted to be this character artist. You were trying to brand it. You were creating in a specific paradigm. And it almost sounds like you found your success when you kind of let go of that and just allowed yourself to just express freely and creatively. And in yes. turn, did you find that that actually led to a greater groundswell of support because people could see more of Ali, they could see more of you? Absolutely. I mean, the, the work wasn't wasn't good at all either. Like if you look at the Pixel Pop account and go back down, it was it was kind of bad, you know, and uh, but I kept doing it. I P I X O P O P. Um, so I just I just had such a um, I didn't care anymore, you know, and you're right. I just kind of said, this is the time to do it and I'm going to continue doing it. And, um, you know, things grew out of it. And one of the things that happened was that the Pixel Pop characters became an idea of a character. So if you see Stitch Bunny, it's blue. It's got long ears. It's got big eyes. It's got little stitches around it. But I can't even draw him the same over and over again. So therefore, it makes kids that do like the Pixel Pop classes that I was doing when the pandemic started kids can draw my characters and not feel bad about themselves if they draw the head too, a little bit too big or if they draw it too small, it doesn't really matter, right? Uh, but yeah, you're right. I mean, I basically, it, just allowing myself to paint and draw and share and have an audience for it was, was really the key. Very cool. I, I had one other question because uh, whatever that secret is that you you use to get your wife to allow your artwork in the house and um, not not get reprimanded, I need to know that. But I, I think I saw you kind of talk about this in some some other places. Um, you know, a lot of your work is uh, has a lot of anger or anxiety or, or you can really see that resonating on the page and it can be kind of chaotic and give that kind of vibe. Right. And 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 let me let me know if i get this right you kind of took the woman and the feminine energy as an aspect of it to help soften it or help deliver that message in a palatable way no i mean i think what happened was the initial work 2005 i want to say probably till 2015 was fairly fairly dark where even a friend of mine walked into the house after my wife would tell me like you you illustrate so beautifully for like clients but why are you so messy on canvas right why are you why is this like why is it 
the word fuck everywhere. And, you know, it was pretty bad, right? My dad would call me and go, why are you cussing in your pieces? And I'm like, it's just a word, dad. You know, and I was like, always like trying to defend myself. And, and uh, one day, one of uh, my wife's and I friend, he was an art student. I mean, he had gotten his master's at like design center or whatever. And he's Arabic and uh, he's very soft spoken. And he walks into my garage and he goes, Habibi, enough puking on canvas. <laughs> I can't and, believe that's how they see it. Yeah, and and I said okay, uh, and it was funny because you see, like this wonder, it's all about flowers, right? Flowers and stuff. Uh, I ha I was in a gallery, and you know the gallery lady was putting my work in her in her uh, gallery, and she's like, "Why do you have all these like bad words and dirty things and whatever?" I'm like, "What do you want me to draw? Like girls and flowers? Like what?" Do when is that ever going to happen? And who knows, like, you know, a few years later, that's all I was painting, you know? Uh, <laughs> it, you know, now if you see chaotic stuff like Quarantine Magic, right, which is on top, which we did an animation on uh, as an NFT, you know, this piece right here, I'm pointing at my screen like you guys can see what I'm doing. Yeah, that one, uh, the, the one with the skull. So when you look at Quarantine Magic, yeah, it is messy. It is crazy. But as my wife, like if I show this to my wife, she'll be like, oh, I like that. And I'm like, why? I've shown you like all this other stuff. And I remember her the first time I did a piece like this, it was called I Love This Shit. And that was a very interesting story about, again, spirituality and connecting and all that stuff. And when I showed it to her, she goes, oh, it's because it's organized mess. It's like organized yeah. chaos. And so there was this thing about these pieces because they were done in love. They weren't done because of angst or anger i haven't had that for for quite a, quite some time mm. uh 2015 when i did i love this shit which i'll share with you guys later on if you probably look it up in google you, you'll see. maybe find it uh that this piece uh, will it come up i don't know if it'll come up mm. uh, yeah right there 2015 2016 saw it no 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 it, it was you can Love find it. it. Yeah, you can find it in archives, but it's right there. The one with the blue face. Uh, right blue. here. Yeah, that one. So when I did this piece, I was sitting in the coffee shop and, uh, oh. and that's probably scroll. Yeah, maybe it's on the bottom. I don't know. I don't know. Where it These went. are beautiful, though. So we can look yeah, at them. Yeah, that was early girl work, 2015. That was my first flash sale. Ooh, I want this deck. Yeah, I'll make you one. Even though I don't skate. <laughs> yeah, you can put it on the wall. Uh, but when I did, when I did, yeah, that's, I love this shit. So when I was doing that, that's a, probably a 13 inch by eight inch piece. I did that piece with some, uh, really cool markers. You know, you could blow on, and there were like really thin design nib pieces, like, like pens like this, mm. but they had, uh, they had liquid ink in them. So you could, you could like spray on, you could blow on it and get those spray things. It was really experimental. But I remember when I was sitting in the coffee shop doing this piece, I felt this vortex open up over my head and then just kind of like cover me and shield me. And I was in this like meditative zone for probably about an hour or two drawing this piece. You, you know, the line work isn't all that great. The layering is just OK. It's just it was just me building and having a good time with the pieces. But if I felt like I was protected, I was safe i was mm. happy i was calm while doing this piece and when i was done i took a picture of it and i moved on took a picture posted it went home next thing i know on my instagram feed or on my facebook feed at the time mostly uh there was so many like comments like wow this is so beautiful this is so powerful this thing is different than everything else you've done and i was like looking at my 2005 pieces i'm like it's kind of the same in some weird ways, but maybe they feel something different in this one. Maybe they mm. do feel what I now call the love vortex, right? Mm. And and there there was something about it, and there was that was the first time I got two comments from two people. That was the trigger word. Before this, anything I would post, if I said it's it's a hundred bucks, I wouldn't even get a like on that post because people felt like if they click like, they like have to buy it. Mm. So it was an interesting thing. But in this one, I realized that uh, what the magic words are, if somebody's going to buy it. Mm. And the magic words were, I want this. Yes. <laughs> That's how was it. I want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was like, OK, so now I know. And one of those two, I want this is bought 
uh, I think it was like a three or four thousand dollar print of the piece. I still wow. have the original. Yeah, so that was the kind of the genesis of the next generation of the work because 2015, because I was painting 15, you know, five, 10 hours a day, that started the healing process. I started mm -hmm. calming down, less thought, less bullshit, less wasting time doing whatever it was I was doing, trying to figure my shit out. So and that's why this piece was kind of the beginning of that and attaching to the love vortex yeah. and, I and, and healing. Yeah, I even noticed right here, it says, they always say it's going to be okay, I believe. Oh, wow. Right I can't even yeah. read my own writing. I can't believe you can read it. <laughs> um, uh. That's really beautiful. Um, that experience is like, I'm, I'm so curious about the love script and how that came to be and like what that was like for you. Oh, I see you're holding up. The love script the started love script, with this. Yeah. This is the love, symbol, love equal symbol. You see it? It's in this piece too. It's everywhere in that piece. It's like the thin lines above, they always say, that you just read. Yeah, right there. And, and you know, I, I put it everywhere at that time. You see it probably like 50 times in this piece. So that's the love equals sign. This is, this is in January 2015. I'm a logo guy, right? So I like to minimize everything like powerful concepts, mm -hmm. core values of a company into one symbol. That was my job for a long time. Uh, so when I was messing around with the word love one day, like three or four in the morning, I'm painting. No, I'm actually designing and my right hand is just doodling the word love. And all of a sudden this shows up and I'm like, mm. Mm, either I'm crazy because it's three in the morning or this is fucking genius. This came from somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to leave it up to everybody else. So I just posted it and I called it love equals and I left it at that. And the next morning again, I wake up and everybody's like, oh like, my wow. God, this is amazing. How did you come <laughs> up with that? And so if I can show you, are you guys reading it the right way or is it reversed for you guys? I don't really. It's um, correct. It's coming it's up correct. the right way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's the word love, but it's also a person with one hand receiving from God and serving with the other hand That's or receiving so cool. from the universe. And 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 this, this changed meaning for me five years later. But mm. if you also break it down, it's the number one. Omega square root equal sign from alpha to omega, the root of all equals love. That is if, so cool. That's so fucking genius. If you tur turn it this way, it's a guy with a big nose talking a lot with his mouth open. <laughs> That's probably me because I can't shut up. And upside down, I mean, I'm probably the most mouthful artist you'll ever meet, but I don't I just, know. I don't yeah. know about that. <laughs> is there I other might ones? have you beat. Good, thank God, <laughs> thank God. And upside down, it's equals M pi. One of the mathematician buddies showed me this one. Wow. So equals M pi squared. If you put, do you see the M pi? Equals M pi. Equal M pi symbol. M yes. Pi. Equals M pi squared is called the Poincare theorem. It's about spheres. And if you take a sphere and you flatten it, does it have the same surface area as if it was when it was a sphere? So, um, so I put this in a lot of paintings and then four more love symbols came love, full circle, love, 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 lots of love. And, uh, I'll, I have visuals for you. I can draw. Let me go ahead. So the second love symbol. Ooh, live drawing. Yay. This is the second love symbol. Love, full circle. L O V E. Mm. These are all 2015, by the way. Third love symbol is L O V E. So this phone, this first one is like self love because there's a guy, there's a person or a girl like, hugging themselves. Mm. Second one is two people holding hands. So, so relationships. That, yeah. Third one. Uh, I think I did one too many. <laughs> one, two, three. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> So third one, uh, I have one extra line. I'm going to flatten that one for you. No, it was right. Whatever. Anyways, <laughs> so when this one showed up, I asked my wife, I was sitting on the couch. I said, what day is it today? And she goes, it's October 18th, 2015. 10, 18, and that was supposed to be five. So this one. So it came to me on that day, right? Mm, I see that. Yeah, whoa. So this is the reflection of love. Love, love. So, and and then the last one was L O V 
E. This came to me on November 3rd, 2015 at 3.15 p.m. Because now I was sensitive about when things were showing up. So 3.15 is prominent in here. And I asked a couple of Christian buddies. I'm like, hey, look in the Bible. What's 3.15? And one of them said it's about eternal life. And the other book says it's about crushing the serpent's head, which was like the arrow down. And I saw this as a shield, like love as protection. So I put these love symbols in a lot of my work for about a year, 2015 to 2016. 16, I ended up going to Tokyo. That's when the big healing kind of experience happened. Mm -hmm. All my like stresses and whatever, 80% of that shit, like all the stuff that I was worried about for 40 years just dissipated. Was there a specific incident that happened um, in Japan or was it like I was just I was, out of nowhere? No, I just, I was home. Like I had a freak out moment, you know, like a little panic attack when we got there. First, when we landed, I was like, to my two buddies that I took with me, uh, I felt like I was home. I said, I'm home. That was like my first words when we landed, when we walked on the street. And then, uh, and again, I was born and raised in Iran till 10. And I had been to Japan when I was like seven. Uh, and I remember it, but you know, again, Sanrio, Shotokan Karate for 20 years. I like Japanese food. You know, like there was a lot of connections. I wanted to speak Japanese. Uh, so when we got there and then I had like a little freak out moment in the, in the hotel. And then after that, there was just a lot of walking and feeling completely safe. Like nothing was going to happen, you know? And I think being physically safe there was important. I'm 6'6", 280 pounds. I've trained 20 years, but there's always that internal, um, anxiety of not being safe, I think, because of Iran, because coming here yeah. to, uh, to, you know, America and then getting beat up by everyone and then going to high school and getting beat. So my school experience wasn't that great. And trauma was at home, uh, not at home, but at, at school and back in Iran as well, because of the bombings and things like that, I would say, which I'd never even thought about till I got older. Right. Um, so, so those things just kind of I think dissipated because there was a sense of just pure safety. And other than that, I can't tell. I think it's the land and, you know, maybe I was something in a past life or, you know. Uh, so I ended up going to Japan twice after that. But in 2016, when I came back, I was like, God, I'm ready for something else. These love symbols are getting boring. They're very like contrived. They're like just, just too rigid. And uh, sorry for all the writing and stuff, but what? No, <laughs> don't yeah, apologize. Please do. yeah. <laughs> please. So when I asked God for something else, this started happening. These weird, mm. and, I, and they're very simple, right? I mean, they yeah. just kept, but I couldn't stop. And I just kept doing it. And I didn't realize that it was probably binary code till later. Oh, snap. So if you look all the way from the love symbols, which had like a math formula to the ones and zeros, they are all um information right information flowing mm -hmm. in and one day i was on a big canvas i was having a good time doing a live painting i was in 2000 i don't even know the year but uh maybe eight 2009 uh, i'm not eight or nine 2016 17 around 2016 i'm mm -hmm. doing live uh auctions i was doing live auctions on facebook i was probably one of the first dudes to like jump on facebook and go i'm gonna sell this painting while I paint it, wow. you know, you're ahead of your time. <laughs> and I was doing these like things and they weren't that great, but I was doing it anyway and uh, selling these huge paintings. And then it would cost even more to ship it than how much they were paying me <laughs> to like New York or something. Oh, but you make mistakes like <laughs> and you learn. And, uh, but one of these paintings, I started filling up an empty space with these ones and zeros, I'll call them, or these squiggly lines that were coming down. And all of a sudden in my head, I'm like, oh my God, I'm writing a new language. What is mm. this? This is crazy. And then I'm like, no, you're crazy. Like I started having these doubts already about the fact that I'm going nuts. And the funny thing is I thought I had a full language going. When I look back at that first painting, that Genesis painting of the script, it was still the ones and zeros. But in my head, it looked completely different. And mm. I'll show you guys, this is, uh, maybe I can do it this way. There. Today, the script is a lot more flowy. Yeah. It's really beautiful. I don't know why I feel like, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure I know what it means. Um, well, I don't know what it means either. Yeah, like I just, 
But if you look, reading it. <laughs> you'll probably find English words in there. I mean, like the word love is in here already. You see that L-O-V-E right there? Mm. Love shows up quite often, probably in a lot of them. I'm not pre-planning this, obviously. I, I can, you know, I can probably do this with my eyes closed. And then, uh, so I did this for, I did the script. The script initially was more, it was more like, like that. And now it's more like, like free. What is it called when, when we combine letters in English? Like, uh, cursive. Like cursive. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So there's the know, cursive version of it. Looking at it, two things are striking to me. One, almost, um, almost Japanese characters like like you would see um, in some of their works, but also Arabic calligraphy where they take, you know, the flowy script and kind of shape it into yeah. objects with it. Sorry, I lost I lost my monitor because I was trying to tilt it. Can you guys hear me still? Yeah, can I can hear still you. hear yeah. you. Okay, yeah. my monitor is booting back up, sorry. I was no tilting worries. it up to show you the script piece behind me. <laughs> <sighs> okay. No worries. Um, is the camera back? Yeah. Mm, Start there you go. There, there you go. go. So, uh, where is the camera? Camera. Looks like uh, it. I can't see. No, that's a different camera. I have three cameras attached to this thing. There we go. There go. Got too excited. So <laughs> I scripted. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's got Japanese. It's got Arabic. It's got Farsi. It's got Sanskrit. I've had, uh, and here's where the mystery stuff started is for six months I scripted and I thought I was going nuts. I had imposter syndrome. Like, what are you doing? Or, uh, yeah. I never wanted to be like somebody else like retina. I'm like, Oh, retina does like people kept saying retina does his own language. I'm like, yeah, but he kind of built that language. I didn't build this language just flowing through me. And for six months I did that until, um, one time somebody said, I want to buy it. And I did my first black and gold piece that, you know, that there's a piece behind me or you guys can find them online, like the mm -hmm. one behind there. And she emailed, she called me. She goes, I got to have that. Can I have it? I said, sure, I'll sell it to you. And she bought it, delivered it. Two days later, she messages me. And again, I'm really not accepting the script yet. I'm not happy with it because it's not, I don't have a choice, but let it happen. Mm -hmm. And, uh, she wrote that as we were going through the piece uh, and we were looking at it, uh, we love it so much. I guess she was married and she goes, it's our partner. And she goes, I love this as much as my partner. My partner's name is Nomal, N-O-M-A-L. And it was written in English right in the center of the piece. And <laughs> I said, I wrote her back. I said, okay, I'm going to go cry a little bit and I'll be right back. Because <laughs> for the first time it made sense to me even though it mm. didn't make sense. Like mm -hmm. there was a purpose to the script uh, because I was doing good with the girls. I was selling, I was I was starting to, you know, it was 2016, I'd just come back from Japan, you know, like I was, I was happy where I was with the art. And then I asked for more and this comes and I ha it makes no sense. And mm -hmm. uh, it, it took, it took six months and then I accepted it after that. And ever since then I've told people who they're gonna marry when their boyfriend, you know, who their boyfriend is. I've had Japanese people read full sentences. Chinese people walk into my studio and go, oh, that says kindness. That's you, incredible. You, you write Chinese? I'm like, no, but thank you for telling me. That's really what, cool. Wow. What do you attribute this to, like for this to have come to you and just and and be able to flow through you? I asked for it, but I didn't think I was going to get something like this, you know? Yeah. So... I'm I, I, I ask for stuff all the time. Like if I'm ready and I'm bored, I'm like, I'm ready for something else. Mm. I say it. And that's when it happens because there is this internal thing for me where it gets to a point where I'm like, it's got to be bigger than this. It's mm. got to be bigger. There's something like I'll be sitting there like coloring in a skirt, you know, of a girl and, or I'm coloring in hair. I'm like, come on, God, like, I can't be standing in the studio like doing this all day. Like it's got to be bigger than this. And that's when the healing stuff started. Yeah, that was going to, I, I was really curious about the quantum healing that you offer. And do you think that um, this language that's flowing through you has something to do with this 
quantum healing. I was curious what those sessions are like and when that started for you. Uh, so I would have to go back to like 2016 when I started doing these, you know, I would paint, you know, you see how I paint like pretty rapidly. I draw the girl's faces other than the slow paint with, you know, the colors and things like that, which the base of it happens quickly with the Japanese brush, um, things happen really quickly. So things are flowing through me and uh, nightmare, as you were asking, like, wh where does this come from? The I was explaining this today or last night in my uh, clubhouse session is that when I was, when I had a lot of anxiety and stuff happening or panic attacks an extreme of it was paranoia sometimes that was 2016 probably uh, where it started going away. But before that, I only had a limited amount of time to be creative because I only believed to create when I was connected. I always knew that even from being a kid, like 99, 2000, like starting the agency stuff. So it, it was really important for me to this, the flow was natural. It was through the head, through the right arm out. And even today, when I interact with the computer for the past 20 years, I've been on a Wacom Cintiq or a Wacom, whatever, Intuos or whatever, because, and I used to talk for them about this. I would say, you know, a mouse is like a creative block. You know, when you're designing with a mouse, you're like, your head is hitting a wall. Whereas with a tablet, you know, you're always flowing. So even when I'm moving around files on a computer, I want to be on a tablet because it keeps my mind and my energy flowing through the computer. So with that being said, uh, knowing that uh, was important and finding the Japanese brush was the second kind of the, another opening to that because painting with a regular brush and acrylics just felt really slow. It felt like drawing with a mouse. And when I found the inks and, and, you know, real Japanese brushes from Tokyo and all this stuff, I mean, that's when I really felt complete. Like, but again, there comes like the little doubt that goes, you're painting with Japanese brushes and inks on canvas. You're not a painter, you know? So I had to kind of come overcome some of those. They were big, big back then. Now it's like, what were you, you know, you can do whatever you want. And now it's all about mark making. Anything that I can make a mark with fast uh, is important. So the the healing stuff, I think when 2015, 2016, uh, started clearing out a lot of my angst and trauma and whatever it was. And then Japan completely clears out everything about 80%. That limited amount of time that I would create had made me fast at logo design, at, you know, because I, I, I only had like a one hour window a day that I could be good. The rest of the time I was thinking about nonsense, right? So as that expanded, that time expanded, I could create all day. So like there's days where I've designed three logos, packaged an entire company's product line, then painted four pieces, then post, you know? So like there is an expansion to to the time that I have to create. And I also have three kids and a wife and, you know, and bills and all that stuff too. So it's so. mind boggling that you could do three <laughs> logos in one day and have all of that life going on yeah. as well. <laughs> and I think again, and I started teaching that and I created the, what I called the hyper creative method. And that's a whole nother ball game, you guys, I, it, which was basically reverse engineering why I was so fast. That's when I figured it out. And, uh, and I was, turning in good work. I mean, my, the brands, I don't know if you've seen like Thayer's Naturals or uh, U Theory or Flippergram, all of these brands ended up being huge. And partially I felt like not only I was technically good, but I was embedding that stuff with energy as well before I knew I was doing that. Mm. And, yeah. uh, you know, because as a logo designer, I'm not the greatest logo designer. I just knew how to translate my clients core values into a strategic identity. That's, but I was also mm -hmm. embedding it with love because I was doing it with love. Yeah. Uh, fast forward to 2016, I'm doing shows with Mont Blanc and I'm drawing for everybody and I'm telling stories and I'm talking a lot and people start having physical reactions to me. They start shivering, shaking, crying while I'm painting. And I'd be like, okay, that's cool. You know, give them a <laughs> hug and peace, you know? <laughs> and sometimes it was like this weird, you know, it would, I didn't understand a lot of the, I'd been reading like Deepak Chopra since I was 15, mm. but I, on a practical level, I didn't understand frequency, vibration, uh, entrainment, like 
heart energy. I didn't understand these things. It's not in my vocabulary. It just wasn't.、Mm-hmm. Uh, but I knew I felt good. I was in, you know, I'm in Mont Blanc store, and there's a hundred people waiting for me, and I'm drawing for them, and I, I'm smiling, and I'm high on this, like, you know, this. It was, it was really in- incredible,、uh, being able to do that with people. And to this day, it's still the same. But when I would leave, I was so high, and I was like, "What do I do now?" And I would end up at like、yeah. Taco Bell or Del Taco, and <laughs> and I would eat, and I would feel so good. And it was like, it's like suddenly. And then my acupuncture lady goes, "You dumbass! Your vibration is going up, and you're grounded by shitty food. You're trying to get away from it because your body's like, 'What the fuck is this? Yeah, like, like, bring it down, bring it down.' It. Yeah, yeah. It was high because、so、I was like, you have an interaction with a hundred people, like seven of them start crying, one of them starts shaking, and you know, you're like, 'All right, like that's really cool, but I don't, you know, and the connection I made." A lot of、it's、energy, so much connection at once. Like it's not、uh, typical to receive all of that at one time. Yeah, and I、yeah. did that over and over again.、Uh, I probably did maybe like ten shows a year.、Uh, you know, within the second or third show, I started charging, so I would get paid like ten grand to show up for a couple hours because it was cool and I needed to pay my bills and I couldn't、yeah. do it on like Mont Blanc pens or John Barbados clothes. I have a lot of leather jackets. If you guys want one.、Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or or a Mont Blanc pen,、uh, but no, I mean that's how they were paying me the first couple of shows, and then eventually I started getting paid to show up, and they started flying me around for like different shows. But it it was it it never passed that like I don't want to say it was like so huge. I just made it huge because I was a branding guy. Like when I got the Mont Blanc show, I told my friends to come and let's make three commercials. So we made three commercials that looked like Mont Blanc had done it. And then we paid advertising, and it looked like Sabin and Mont Blanc were doing something huge. But what I want to show you guys today,、uh, they actually sent me a book、um, with Asoline. Last, last, I got this. I was, I got this three days ago. And it's fresh. It's fresh. This is their book.、Uh, I'm sorry, it's in like a bag and another bag. But you know, Asoline. It's very fancy, though. Yeah. Yeah. So this is. Called、wow. inspired writing. I haven't shared it yet with like social and stuff because I wanted to do a film. And Ooh, so we get to see it first. Yeah, this is the first time I'm sharing it. Ooh,、Thank、inspired、you. writing. And、uh, you know, I've had such crazy success in the NFT world, but it didn't emotionally move me as much as when I opened this book because、uh, to after four years of working with them. And it's funny because I didn't even use a Mont Blanc pen, but be, <laughs> but but look like here is here is the the pens by Warhol. That's a Warhol design. He didn't design it, but Warhol. And then like two pages in, there's Marilyn Monroe. And then where is it? Right around here. So on this section, that's not me, but.、Yeah. Okay, so the section five, strokes of genius, that's what it's called. We have,、uh, and it says Ernest. It's Ernest Hemingway. There's a lot of, like all the people who've like used Mont Blanc Mont or Blanc. whatever. And right here on this little side, it says、uh, Love Script Calligraphy by American Iranian painter illustrator designer Ali Sabit. Mont Blanc creativity has consistently energized by those figures celebrating and commemorating their lives, helping to tell stories, in the hope of galvanizing others towards making their own creations. Mont Blanc has also actively collaborated with major figures in world. While my my thing is like right there, and then there is the page of love script.、So cool. This was in 2019. I did it in one of the shows, and.、Uh, You know, and the, over here it says cultures such as actors, directors, artists, and designers, whose outlook and ethos intrinsically matches the company's pioneering spirit. The idea of do- doers, active creatives who pursue their love and passion intuitively, spontaneously, and decisively, who change the face of realms in which they create, is a constant inspiration to Mont, Mont Blanc. So, so cool. to be like commemorated in this book, and、uh, I mean. This I was sitting on the couch like I I, I know I've talked about crying a lot but 
I couldn't stop crying, and my wife's like, "What the fuck's wrong with you?" I'm like, I'm, just I'm, so in, happy. I'm like, I'm in, you know, like she's like, yeah, it was just funny, but I couldn't stop. <laughs> I I couldn't stop for like it was like the the first time we had our first kid. I can, it was like tears of joy for sure, yeah. uh, but it was also like a sign to our mortality. Like, okay, I haven't been in a gallery ever. Mm. Like, I have never been in a, a you know, in a real art show but you know i just got like mentioned in a in a historic book between ernest hemingway and frida kahlo was the next page mm. so you know that's like that's really cool so and then and again the success in nfts was happening and this is only like four days ago where i got this yeah. but this was congratulations so much yeah it's, it's small it's tiny but it's just it's, no i think it's and it's a pure script sick. page where everybody who in my, I won't say who, but there's people who have seen the script and some people have made them uncomfortable or they're like, well, we like your girls better or why don't you put a girl next to it? And now, you know, you see this book, this corporate company that I've been working with, they're honoring that script yeah. like in so many different ways. And yeah, so that's that. I, I was going to ask what, you know, you've accomplished quite a lot as a, you know, an art director, a designer, an artist. Um, I know you you were saying you don't see yourself as a painter, but um, like, would you, what was, what would you say is the accomplishment that you're most proud of? Oh man, being a good friend and being like, Hopefully a decent, like, I can't say, being, I want to say being a good dad, but I, you know, it's questionable because we're just learning as we go forward, but I try, and I try yeah. to be a decent husband. Um, and now I'm trying to be a better son, you know? So like mm. trying to work a lot of those things. Uh, but as a, as a painter, uh, I, I see myself as a creator, but I see myself more as like somebody who transfers energy now. Like mm. I'm charging surfaces when I put my hands on to sit there and like fill up, fill like colors in, um, you know, it, unless I have to, I, I don't want to do it, you know? Right. Uh, but uh, going back to how the healing got activated is, is that, so that stuff was already happening for me. And this is a really weird video my friend made. He's a filmmaker <laughs> and he decided to do this. It was really That's fun. Cool. He made me sleep in the middle of the street while he put <laughs> <laughs> it made a lot of people uncomfortable with this one uh <laughs> but we do that we do we do fun it's stuff awesome like that. that you have friends like that that oh want to do God. cool yeah. shit like that he's awesome he's like i need you in the middle of the street it's like, <laughs> like right. okay That's just like old it. times I'm like, yeah just <laughs> just don't die <laughs> and there was nobody watching the cars by the way so that was the daredevil so mm -hmm. when this stuff came uh this is what you're this is my first it's not my first healing, but it's my first essential tremor healing. And I was shocked that it actually worked. Wow. Um, this was in 2019, July 4th was when it started. Um, again, I had always looked for the ability to heal. Uh, and I guess I was doing it with my work and in the shows, I just didn't call it that. People called it that. And I wasn't comfortable calling it that because I couldn't actively do it. I just would give somebody a painting and they would you know, be happy or, you know, also I used my paintings and drawing for people to get through things. Like if somebody wasn't nice to me at like a hotel, I would quickly draw them a stitch money and they're like, you know, we can't do that for you, blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden they'd be like, did you just do this for me? Oh my God, really? Here's tickets to the after party tonight. I swear to God, I swear awesome. to God. Like guys, I was a guy, I just, I just did. I didn't do a girl. I was a guy. A testament I, to the power of art and yeah. and energy. Just yeah. having that that energy, that that open, loving um, yeah. vibe is everything. It, absolutely. Yeah. And and then in 2019, I read a book called you know again I, I wanted the healing stuff, so I read one more book called Quantum Touch, and Quantum Touch Two, and all it said was this is how you raise your vibration. The simplest way is to stare at your finger for like two minutes and breathe into it. And by body awareness, within about two minutes or three minutes, I was giggling. I was like, happy. <laughs> like, this is weird. Like, why am I happy? You know? <laughs> and then supposedly when you have your vibration up at that point, by entrainment, by going near somebody, you can 
put your hands on them and it's faster than reiki and you know i had done my reiki and i did it didn't really work for me that well uh and but i i felt that i was happier when i was doing that and then about six months later i finished reading the second book and the second book basically to activate these healing powers from far away all you do is close your eyes think about people you love in your heart and then expand that in a huge bubble and expand it further and further and further and then you can think about someone they get better and i was like oh hell no this is stupid and i closed the book no, and I, walked away. I was so like that's, that's so dumb like <laughs> yeah you're right i mean uh, the first time was july 4th i sat next to my wife she goes my knee hurts can you heal it and i said i don't know but i put my hands on her knee and uh I go, it's not your knee. And I put my hand like a little bit further down the thigh. I go, it's here. And I pressed in and I held it. And she's, she screamed. And then she goes, how did you know it was there? And I go, I don't know. And next day we're at her cousin's house. And her cousin goes, uh, my knee hurts. I can't walk. And it was like level nine. And my wife's like, come heal her. You did it to me yesterday. <laughs> like, I'm not going to stick my hands between her legs. That's weird, man. And she goes, no, you're stupid. Come do it. I'm like, no. And uh, I swear to God, this is, this is like true. Like, a minute into it, I'm like looking around and I look at them and I go, I'll do it, but I'll do it from here. And they both look at me like I'm crazy and they go back to talking. They're like, whatever. And I close my eyes. I did the little exercise. And next thing I know, I hear like two minutes, I hear her screaming like, there's no pain. There's no pain. Oh my God, where's my knee? Like, I can't feel my knee. And I was hooked. So after that, I just, it was practice. Like I would, anybody who was willing to, you know, give me a shot, you know, even her, my wife's, uh, my wife's dad, who's a doctor, like he has me like working on his legs when they hurt or, you know, so it just got faster and faster to the point where right now, if I want to activate someone, all I have to do is text them. Yeah. I don't really do it. Like before I would sit there and think about things and, you know, like do the hard thing. Maybe within the first week, it I kind of like graduated from it, like the first couple of weeks. Um, uh, Right now, when I activate someone or activate myself to raise my vibration, I kind of snap my fingers and I, I hear a high pitched noise in my right ear mm. and I mess around with the frequency with my hand like this. Like if I go like this, That's I can wild. increase it and I can lower it. I know I sound crazy. Whoever is watching, I'm not mm. nuts. This actually works. This makes a lot of sense to me, but maybe I'm crazy too. But I do, think... you, see, do you see like this video of me painting uh, yeah. like this? I've had people, I've had one person who's a musician, she does scores for movies. When I had her watch this, she said, when I'm doing it, when I'm watching this, I hear your stroke and it hurts my ears. I guess she had some sort of ear pain or something. Mm. I swear this happened. I activated her over the phone. Wow. I cleared her ears. I don't know what was going on. I don't know what it was. But then when she watched it again, she felt completely like it was, it was healed. Her ears were healed. So this was kind of a combination thing that was happening. The first essential tremor was on video. You saw that. Uh, she's still well. That was a year and a half ago. Essential tremors are, are kind of like a thing that I, uh, my dad kind of has, and my dad has them. So like I was always, it was always concerning to me. She, he's got a mild case, but I was, you know, when I was younger, it was concerning. So for me to be able to impact people with essential tremors is really um, nourishing to my soul. And uh, I probably helped maybe seven or eight, maybe 10 people worldwide with them in the past two years. Wow. Um, I have a friend who used to work for, you know, she was a anchor on TV. She had uh, uh, Parkinson's, she, she has Parkinson's and uh, I was able to reverse her Parkinson's symptoms for about five days, wow. it took about 20 minutes. Uh, she didn't even need her medication anymore. Uh, so these are people will will talk about it, but because I don't do this for a living, I just do this for fun and I do it for love and I do it for whatever, you know, because I can. And, mm. you know, I thought about monetizing it and uh, I'm like, what am I going to do? Open like a healing center, you know, like straighten your chakra. It's not me. dude. <laughs> it's like <laughs> I mean, you're extremely generous in spirit. You know, I, I see that you're doing um, these talks on Clubhouse to help onboard other artists into the NFT Absolutely. space. And um, I mean, it's really beautiful what you're doing. Um, I'm just excited. I mean, whenever <laughs> I get excited, I, I've probably driven a couple of friends away because one of them said, I text him, I'm like, fuck everything else you're doing right now. You need to get in. And he said, 
uh, what did he text me back? He said, you sound like a madman. Text me back when you find God. Or no, text me back when you align yourself back with God. I'm like, what the fuck? What? Like, this, this is like my third like- day and I've done like 80 grand in sales. And I'm like, I want you to have some of this too. You know, your broke ass needs to get out. And that's what I get texted, you know? So I'm it's proud. like, but I, I've been like this for today, which is crazy that you guys, we, we put this on today. My first NFT was on February 15th. So today is one month exactly. Wow. Yeah. And uh, to Heather's crazy. point, you know, there's so many people um, that have referenced you in our community or even in passing in clubhouse rooms that you're not even on talking wow. about how you've really given them inspiration. And uh, um, we'll save it for the end. But a lot of people have specifically said when you guys talk to him, he's so great. Be sure to ask him about what we should do as artists and how we could harness this energy and do well. So you are lauded in these communities already in that Uh, short time. But I I did want to ask you, you know, how did you go from that and everything you're doing to NFTs? How how did that bridge happen? uh, So I think if... It was, it was another one of those, like, it's got to be bigger than this moments. This was probably January something, mid-January. And uh, I'm like, it's got to be, you know, I, I was, I, I'm in here, like, you guys can't see, but basically in this little office, and I have my studio in the garage, I paint, I print, I sign, I sign the back, I draw on, like, USPS boxes, like, these girls, and then every package I sent out, and I was doing auctions every day for the past... A uh, year and a half on my Instagram, I've been doing auctions, live auctions on every single post. We cleaned it up after uh, I started getting into NFTs. I had my uh, my uh, my uh, social media person take it off. Well, her name is Yumi. She's awesome. Uh, so I had her take everything off. And uh, but I was doing that every day. So and I was selling to be grateful. Like I've sold probably over six thousand paintings in the past. Not, not 6,000, like 3,000 paintings, prints in the past five years. Wow. So 2016, I started doing these flash sales. A friend of mine, Spencer, I met him and he created these flash sale programs for me. And that was like the first, this is 2015. You remember the Tokyo girls you were seeing, the first girls that were kind of raw? Uh, that was my first flash sale. And the way that worked was the program was, and this is the reason why I'm explaining this is because for other people to understand that. I was primed for this for about five years. So it wasn't like I walked in, I naturally intuitively knew what to do when I walked in and I got help. But when I started in 2015, 16, I want to go to Japan. I meet this guy named Spencer Brown. He'll probably watch this later and go, thanks for giving me credit because he, it's all his genius. He goes, you need to create programs. I go, what is that? He goes, you're going to sell paintings and you're going to raise 35 grand and you're going to go to Japan with that money. I go, dude, I put $100 on my things and nobody buys. And he goes, watch. So he goes, what you're going to do is put five original paintings a day on your Instagram and your Facebook. And you're going to have them ready on your website to purchase. And at night at 8 p.m., you allow people to buy it. I go, okay. And then what? He goes, they start at $25 each. I go, okay. And then he goes, the second day, they're going to be $50 each. The third day, $75 each. The fourth day, $100 and $25 increments for 30 days. And he did a spreadsheet for me. And he wow. showed me how much the money was going to be because it was exponential. And I kind of like, I'm like, all right, whatever. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do this. And then two days before it happened, I decided to do it. I painted five pieces in one day, shot them, edited them, threw them up. And... The, lo- the sale went up. I had done my Instagramming and live feed and all that stuff. And Spencer buys like the first three. <laughs> I'm like, fucker, I knew this was your plan. <laughs> Get originals on the cheap. And, but he, he bought the first three and, you know, he's proud owner of them too. And, uh, and then that kind of, and then he created a buzz. He started telling his yeah. friends, he's like, I just bought three from this amazing artist that's coming up and you should buy it too. And, the next day he bought two and the other three friends bought. And then the third day he didn't have to buy any at all. And it just started picking up. By the end of the first flash sale in May of 2016, right before I went to Tokyo, 
I think I did about thirty twenty eight thousand dollars, twenty nine thousand dollars. But I was exhausted. I didn't see my wife for a month. Like I didn't see the kids for a month because all I was doing was painting there in a day, shooting, editing, and posting. That was kind of something that I realized all of a sudden I have the power. This is the same power that people are feeling with the NFTs. That's how I felt with my first flash sale. Yeah. I can create, I can post, and I can sell. That's crazy. And I'm having fun doing it. That's like, I mean, it's very similar to like Nifty Gateway Drops. I mean, like you were doing that before. Yeah, that was this. 2016. So pretty na natural for you to jump into um, yeah. the system. And I yeah. did it again in, in December. I think I did like 37 grand in December. And that was, you know, every time I was broke, I was like, all right, flash sale time. <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> See you, honey. I won't see you for like a month, but that's okay. <laughs> and uh, we'll do, we'll do great things. But, and then I, I got, you know, again, that got exhausting and I'm like, okay, I can't be giving away my originals for 20 bucks, 30 bucks now. Right. Let's do, you know, then I started printing. I didn't like the idea of prints because I like my energy in the work on top of it. Uh, so I called them mixed media multiple originals. So I would do these high quality prints and then I would hand embellish, sign and package and draw the box and ship, which I still do today to, to this day. When people wow. order, they get a lot more than what hopefully they asked for. And uh, but I got smarter. I started like pre planning the sales. I had my website drop them at a certain time every mm. day. And I made some mistakes along the way. Like some of the mistakes I made was when they were hand embellished prints and people, because people were calling me during those times, a lot of my friends were supporting. So they would call me at like 8.03 when the whole thing was started at eight and it sold out at 8.03, I'd get texts like, I was trying and my credit card oh my didn't matter. <laughs> Do you have any? I'm like, and then I would, I got smart. I had like a secret link. I'm like, well, here's your reserves. And then I would sell like a whole shitload that way. And so it was i was just learning and the sales you know again that's how i ended up selling probably about three thousand pieces in 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 a couple of years in about three years and uh and then staggering amount of work that got yeah. boring and that got boring for people not for me essentially i did shorter and shorter sales 10 days three days and it wasn't as lucrative because it just got boring and so we st when the pandemic hit like I got to make a living and I had just finished my last client, which is Thayer's Naturals. Do you guys use Witch Hazel at all? Have you um, seen that I've part? heard of that brand, yeah. So yeah, I, let's pull it up. Yeah, you can pull that up. Yes, I always say like as an artist, if, uh, yeah, that you see that red bottle and their entire <laughs> lineup is my work. This website is mine, all of it. So these guys went from 4 million in yeah. sales after I changed this and created that bottle. I designed that bottle from scratch based on the 1800 uh, bottle that Dr. Thayer used to use. Mm. And I changed all the caps to red because I wanted it to be like a point of trust and I wanted people to see mm. it from far away in a target and be gravitated towards it. But it's become such a household bottle now that I, I feel like if I was Warhol and because sometimes I paint this bottle for them, I had painted it for them. Mm. I'd be like, it would be like if Warhol had designed the can of soup himself and then was yeah. painting it you know not that i'm yeah. warhol or anywhere close to warhol but just pulling like a like strings and, we're in, and, you're featured in a book with him now so you are in oh, that's true. the I didn't think about annals that. of art history with him so yeah, yeah. uh so <laughs> with that thank you i'm gonna cry again <laughs> just kidding. i know i'm getting I, no, I get emotional hearing your story too i mean it's, oh but this yeah. these girls are these like do you see these ones these japan ones this was my first flash sale these went for 25 dollars each somebody has this piece that got her for 25 dollars uh Lucky today I, I don't you are out there <laughs> yeah these are early early work so i was uh, doing these i was doing five of these a day here's the yeah, love, love equals yeah. yeah see i didn't even know how to draw lips back then i would draw mustaches for girls <laughs> 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 it's like a mouth to me. It's so funny uh, that I, you know, every, it seems like every artist has this like bit of imposter syndrome. Yeah. Anyway, no oh, matter. And you look back, you're like, what the fuck? You know, no, no, it's seriously like I, some lady like five years later, she's like, I've loved your work since you sent me that package of work. I'm like what package? So she shows me the, like, I guess she had texted me or DM me like in 2004. 15 or something or 13 
and she had asked me for work and i said just send me a self-stamped envelope i'll send you some work mm. she sent me a picture of a girl i had drawn and she had no eyebrows the girl that i had drawn <laughs> and i sent her she had no neck or she had a neck but no arms or shoulders <laughs> and just boobs and i was like who did i think i was to send her this piece of shit painting like Oh my gosh. How did so I have this much confidence? No, but there was, but then I look at those same pieces and I see my confidence in my line. I see the importance of my work. Even when I look back at like work as early as like, like these characters that I would do that weren't quote unquote good, but I remember knowing that there is an importance to my work. I, yeah. And, and sometimes when I look back at that feeling of like self-importance or importance in the work, I go, did I think it was important because I psychologically needed like attention and I was trying to, or was there really a, like a spiritual truth to the fact that my work was going to be important? Like you, you can never like really know which aspect was playing, right? Is it the psychological aspect of wanting to be seen or was there like some part of me that knew that this work mm. was going to be important? You get what I'm saying? Yeah, I think so, it's a little bit of both, maybe. Yeah. yeah. So to this day, it's you know, but I like where I'm going. I, I'm having a good time with it. I'm, I'm having fun, and and the NFT space again, bringing it back to the whale community and how my life has changed pretty much overnight. And I don't know if whale shark said this. I think he called it a Cinderella story because I think I am, <laughs> I am Cinderella. I this is. <laughs> Uh, uh, no, the whale I, community, your glass slipper. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I go from flash sales and I remember like the week before this happened, I was like, fuck, it's got to be bigger than this. Like I'm packaging boxes. I love sending this stuff, but it, it's, you know, and I'm making decent money. Like I'm paying my bills. We live in a good neighborhood. I have feeding the three kids. It's all good. Right. But it's it's got to be ex more expansive and mm. um one of my friends is like have you heard of nfts i started hearing this like whisper uh, and this is like january mm. and i found a few web there was like one article seriously in january there was like one article like you kept i kept googling and i see like one article that there yeah. has like three or four things and uh i go okay i'll sign up for this one and i sign up for this one and i kept putting it off because everybody wanted a one minute video like in their uploads, like in their mm -hmm. applications. So I'm like, okay, nifty gateway. I'll wait. Cause I have to do that one minute video mm -hmm. and then uh, super rare. I'll wait. Cause it, but then uh, I think known origin didn't want a one minute video, just a link to a video. And I had oh. tons of those. So, you know, <laughs> so you're like, cool. I'm like, cool. I'm Copy, already paste, got, got a video of me in the middle of the street. Yeah. I'm in <laughs> and <laughs> whatever you want, I'll send it to you. And I sent it. And this is, uh, and again, about six months, ago, three months ago, four months ago, I'd had another big uh, breakthrough. I had a, a, the Iranian channel, Manoto TV did a 30 minute documentary on me. That's on my web, uh, my homepage that was shown to like 60 million people, like twice a day for like a month. because they were probably lacking content. So they kept playing me over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> or because it was fucking awesome it was fun it was fun to do and but i got a lot of love like all of a sudden i have this huge iranian crowd that i already had but now from iran and all over the world coming and that was awesome uh was dming like a thousand people a day so i was going through like i go through these like really spikes in my life you know they they, yeah. they spike quite often and i like that because i get bored and i think after packaging all this stuff, I was like, there's got to be bigger. And I found the, uh, the filled out the application and uh, the whisper was getting louder. Have you heard of NFTs? And I'm looking and I'm looking and then I got accepted. They, they text me from known uh, in my DM. They're like, you're almost in and we're busy. And I'm like, what are you guys busy <laughs> doing? What the fuck's going on? Like, what is, why are you hitting me up on Instagram and then like <laughs> tweeting at me? And why are you? I didn't know that it was like a verification process of to see if I'm mm -hmm. real human or something. Yeah. I had a Coinbase account. I bought Ethereum before and sold it, but not much. Uh, I've, you know, it, like crypto always made me feel stupid because I always sold too early or whatever. Mm. And, uh, you know, I bought I bought Ethereum at thirty dollars without even knowing what it was. Wow. Like my friend called me. He's like, bro, you got to buy this thing called Ethereum. I'm like, OK. And I bought like 30, three thousand bucks worth. 
and uh, sold it like a, a year later for a decent amount. But I digress. Um, <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. So basically, that's how it started. I had a few days uh, when I got in. Uh, I immediately kind of had a pricing strategy without knowing I had a pricing strategy, which I explain to people now. Uh, I set. I don't know if you want me to talk yes. about that part. Yeah, this is yes, our, please. Yeah, yeah, we we have we also have questions from uh, from the chat too. But I know people would like to hear. You know, the other artists in the group would like to hear the strategy for sure. Absolutely. So. When I walked in, I the first thing I did was I dropped uh, Galaxy Sailor, which is a version of my Moon Sailor, which is the Space Girl. I knew she would do well because she had done well in the real real world, right? I had, I had sold uh, quite a bit of her and my friend L2C. She's an amazing person. She had inspired that based on the Iranian. Um, uh, uh, if you scroll down, I forget her name right now. But the Iranian, you see, have sold like two different versions of her. Those were all auctioned and sold. Um, so basically, I knew she would do well. I knew she, there was a good backstory to her, so I po posted her, and that's the Galaxy one right there in the middle low. You, yeah, right there. So that's the one I started with. And uh, as you can see, that was the 24-hour live auction thread. That that's how I usually do it, and I honor the 10 bids. Um, so when I posted this, I said, I'm going to let more people have it. I want it to be in people's hands. So I put it at half of Ethereum and I did 10. And not knowing that people were posting stuff for like 0 0.01 or 0 0.1 Ethereum and all that stuff, you know, it, it didn't really matter. I just wanted people to have it. And I thought that 0.5 seemed decent for 10 of them. And uh, the good thing was that it wasn't too low where I could dig myself out of it. If I was, if I was going to, you know, put like 0.2, you know, 0 0.02, then there was no way I would, you know, be able to recover from that ever. And then I set a high one right away. I put a one on one for 10 ETH. And then I filled it out in between. So a three of three was one ETH each because, you know, the 10 of 10 and then a five of five was like maybe two, you know, something like that to that, or, or that was one and three of three was two or something to that effect, right? But I built it out from the 10 and the half. And that basically gave me also a level of self-worth. When people would show up, they would know that I have respect for myself, respect for my work. I'm not willing to sell myself cheap. Even if I don't sell, it's not like, you know, it's going to make a huge difference in my life, right? Well, I didn't know it would, but which, and I showed it to my dad that night. I showed, I'm like, look, dad, this is what I'm doing. I'm going to be selling. He's like, you mean they're going to pay you for the digital file? And, you know, just the questions that I had, too. We, were, right. both, we were both confused. Even though, you know, again, I'm emotionally ready for this, right? And I remember that night, the first one popped, 800 bucks or half Ethereum. I texted to my dad. He goes, this is for you young folks. I'm like, dude, I'm 45. You know, the young, what do you mean young folks? <laughs> Look at my beard. <laughs> I guess I'm still a baby to him. And I said, yeah, but it worked, you know, like somebody bought one of my pieces. This is incredible. And I literally was shaking. Like, I think maybe the first one or the second one, I remember like not shaking, but vibrating like high. It was so different than I'm not, I'm, I'm used to selling work. It's not like a big deal. You know, it's, I mean, it's a big deal every time, but it's not, it's not novel. But when this happened, there was something else happening. Like, fuck, I was gonna it was, say, it's like your spirit being like, "This is the way. Keep going this way." Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. And it was like, and then you know, like I see the roof and stuff here, but I don't feel the roof and the walls and the ceilings anymore. Like, there's none of that exists. And to be honest, it it was a blur after that because I just remember like. Maybe by day two, I'm at like $20,000 in sales. I've sold out of this one. And thank God, Known Origin just allows me one every 24 hours because I would have probably flooded it after the first sale. I don't want everything, ah, you know? And uh, their system is so great. Somehow it knows that I was going to be there and allows only one every 24 hours. And uh, I just kept building my, you know, I, I would put one every night because I felt like there had to be a, a good representation of my work on there. And uh, 
it was continuously selling and selling out and i got to learn how to use twitter for you know after never having it be available and uh between twitter and clubhouse which i jumped on too both of them i jumped on and every time i was in clubhouse people would uh want to check out my work want to highlight it and uh, it was it was really great the first version of this one sold in three minutes when i posted it the white background uh and if people buy uh there's going to be three releases uh, of hope floats if they buy all three i'm going to do a surprise for them i was uh, going to ask if you can share anything about that surprise or no i, I think it'll be a special edition of hope floats awesome. very very special edition of hope floats it's going to be exciting so but three people have this one so i think they might have to buy it on the secondary market and that's the cool thing like secondary market is already like somebody bought big fake oh the cool things that have happened blau bought big fake that was insane like he just called me up in a room and he's like i'm just gonna check out your work now he's like i know you i've seen your work before let me see it now and then he was so gracious and i was so nervous that uh he wanted to buy it at the time uh big fake would be probably in the other collection below and he's like i'm like i'll go mint it now so i'm running around i'm like shit no origin only one a day open c i'm gonna log in i try to log into open c yeah that's big fake right there uh i try to open log into open c on my uh computer and it's all in japanese i swear to god i should have taken a screenshot I can't hear you, Heather. I was just laughing, like that's oh, insane. Yeah. It was it was in Japan, and he's live in Clubhouse right now, wanting to buy my piece. <laughs> so I run into the other room, I grab my laptop, and I open it, and Open C is in fucking Japanese. <laughs> I shit you not, I swear to God, it, this happened. So I end end up minting it on my phone, and then telling him, you know, it's there, and I'm like, it's there, you know, and I'm like totally shaking, <laughs> you know. <laughs> And he goes, hey, bro, I just told you to DM me. I'll do it for you. Like, don't worry about it. You know, and he totally calm. Like, he's like, don't worry about it. I'll get you later. And I think just I was so excited. It didn't matter. Like, and I totally priced yeah. it wrong. And I like overpriced it just because I was excited. And I was trying to match the known origin pricing. And, and he was he was so gentle and kind. And he's been that way with everyone in those rooms. Uh, and then uh, I think that happened. And then a couple of days later, uh, I was doing, I was on cloud nine those days. I was up 24 hours and wow. uh, I was having a good time. And one day I, I was really vibing high. I was really stoked. And I don't remember how I did this, but I went down and I just started commenting on people's Twitter while mm. I was on clubhouse. So I was just saying, hey, what's going on? Oh my God. I love this. You know, like honest, <laughs> I was genuine, you know, I was like yeah. super genuine when I was doing it too. And I guess I commented on whale sharks account and I, ask them to gently like if you can like look at my work and then i came back to my account or i came back to my website and i was on clubhouse and all of a sudden i see like where was the pop-ups coming there was there was like alerts coming from places i think i it's like a mystery now i think it was from my computer but i think yeah. it was on my phone i can't remember <laughs> and i just saw congrats on your three ETH sale I'm like what three ETH? Hey. You have an offer for seven ETH. That was my one of one quarantine magic. I'm like, what? what? And then boom, boom, boom. That happened like 30 some odd times that night. Like <laughs> within half an hour. I'm like, what is going on? Wow. And I went on Twitter and I saw Whale Shark tweeting. I don't know if you've seen that tweet, but it says it. it was an incredible tweet. I probably retweeted it. It's probably I should probably like frame that tweet. um it said basically who says i think i'm gonna like rephrase it who says you know your a collector won't look at your work as long as you ask for it respectfully and kindly like sabit did if he hadn't yeah. i would have never seen his beautiful work and i would have never been able to bring him into the way of all welcome to the way um this is a persian man trying to say two w, a v and a w back to back it's very hard <laughs> welcome, to the, welcome to the whale vault yeah and that, uh, that was huge and that kind of changed everything that night because not only he gave me a backbone uh both financially and 
you know, he gave me his word and he put the stamp of approval on my work. He had seen me, you know, and uh, that's rare, right? Yeah. That's super rare. And uh, and I, being on a great platform, it like, and then he comes back from dinner and he buys everything. He finds me on uh, on OpenSea and he buys everything there too. And he's like, <laughs> I, and he had like an emoji of like him in a supermarket, like throwing everything <laughs> in a cart. He's like, look what I'm doing. It's so funny. And he just he just like posted all day, like all night. There was like post after post about my work, and he started posting videos about me. And oh, it was just <laughs> such an amazing night. And it's, it's how a can testament I, to, yeah. it's a testament to having that um, authentic connection with somebody. Um, you know, you you just were like, here's what I have. Thank you. I enjoyed listening to you. And he just went crazy with it, like, <laughs> which is awesome. Yeah. And I think that I mean, that's really all it takes is just being real with people and and vulnerable too. Absolutely. Well, I'll, I'll just add that, you know, whale shark is very personable and and a great yes. guy as everyone knows so having that authentic connection and being respectful went a long way but he also has probably the most keen eye in the space for talent and what's going to have you know appreciable value and what's going to mm -hmm. be a real mover and shaker in in nfts and art so that validation you know like you said probably echoed through you know socials and and trickled on down and and hopefully you're still reaping the benefits of that absolutely it's been really really amazing um and uh yeah i mean i have a few pieces left that's because you know i want to share it's it's hard for me to like create that scarcity sometimes because of the fact that i'm so excited to share every day um so you know i i just I have a few pieces left because I probably overshared, you know, uh, but over overall, it's been, I think, over 90 NFTs between Known Origin and, and, and OpenSea in the past four weeks, maybe um, more, maybe Sorry. more. Yeah, I want to see that. Oh, there it is. So the question of does politely reaching out to collectors on Twitter actually work? If Sabay haven't hadn't done so, I would not have been able to collect this amazing work on Known Origin. Yeah, and your career and work are truly inspirational. Yeah, yeah. that's true. And I know that. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, you know, internally, even in our own team discussions, you know, we were ecstatic to have taken a position with you, and the whole community has echoed that and just really uh, been supportive and excited that you're part of the Whale Vault. Uh, I'm, I'm more than. I mean, it's just, I'm usually speechless when it comes to what, what happened because uh, it turned our life upside down, like completely changed uh, what's, you know, because that like, that feeling of like, it's got to be bigger than this was here, you know, and, and then the first thing I wanted to do was share it. The first thing I wanted to do is tell my closest friends. The first thing I wanted to do is like openly tell everybody, look, this is what's happening. You got to get on this. Let me help you. And not only friends, everybody, you know, again, I've ran a social network. I've tried to onboard people before that. I invited the first thousand artists to Mojizu myself one on one. And <laughs> so crazy. I'm still doing the same thing now. And I answer every DM. You know, I probably can't do all the collaborations that are coming through just because of the fact that, you know, it's hard to do that, but I'll guide people to do collaborations together. I have done uh, an amazing collaboration, a collaboration with uh, an artist named Yossi. It's not a loop. Uh, we've we've sold two out of three of those for 10 ETH, um, which is the wow. qu Quarantine Magic animated in motion. And he did the he did Galaxy uh, Galaxy in motion. If you those two were just incredible animations that i didn't do yossi did those he's just super talented and i have a beautiful group of talented folks around me we call them the sabit collective right now uh nope. to support each other and support other artists it's on uh it's on known origin it's on known origin okay yeah That's so cool. if you go to um so on uh Oops. Right there, you go down the the second collection. I think the third collection. Oops. Yeah, always. That's always in love. So the third collection. Quarantine magic. Quarantine magic and motion. 
or is it oh it's a it's I, like I, a I, separate I, collection no it's at the bottom of quarantine magic yeah you got a view full collection okay oh i did have it right cool i think that's why maybe the third one hasn't sold yet because mm. there it is so that one mm. so cool and and the music is from my little music label i created this past year can you guys hear the music i don't know we can't. I don't know if you can hear it. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, we'd so, have to change. So Yossi did this, and yeah, so we have a few members in this little sub collective just to help each other and help other artists come up. Because I couldn't do it alone, and you know, at, from the time I started, you know, there is uh, Swan VR. She's been incredible, like to just talk about everything technology. There's been Gabe Vice, which I just met. He's like my uh like american brother like <laughs> he our, our paintings have a lot of similarities but we're totally different at the same time he's been doing great um you know yossi which is amazing jason matias amazing multimedia mm. artist that's doing really beautiful things with photography and shape and uh coloring stuff uh marcus sebastiano which is my boston artist friend that brought me out to boston a, f a few years ago in 2018 to showcase my work at Yotel and never forget that that was a blast so he was one of the people I texted at four in the morning telling him he needs to get on this <laughs> uh, and then we got Mike uh, Rutt uh, which he's one of my collectors and very fast he's become like you know I call them I'm like you got to get on this somehow and now he's become like the host of like all our clubhouses because he's just incredible. So uh, doing a quick, uh, awesome like collaboration with an amazing photographer, Lubelli. So that's coming up as well. Uh, but we're just surrounding each other, you know, to help each other, you know, work, uh, stay positive, stay motivated, bring each other up. It's not about sales. It's about like what's going on, you know, in our each other's lives and uh, and then bringing people up, you know, just whoever, whoever needs help, friends, family. Uh, and uh, I'm thinking about like gifting some pieces to friends and family here and there, which I've been doing. I think if, if things are going to go well, I want everybody that I know close to me. I don't know the logistics of that, if that's okay to do or not, but it just came to me. I'm like, hey, if I'm going to make it at least, you know, maybe some of my friends and family can have a part, a part in this too. And, yeah. and the excitement somehow i can pull them in it's the first time i can i, I mean there's probably ten thousand pieces out there that i've given away in physical form right but wow. this is something different you know because every show i'm painting at least 200 pieces every time i meet somebody i'm you know i go through these brushes like by the dozen like water, you know? yeah. so uh so yeah i've always been about that that's the only challenge i have which i would love you guys's um your guys's input on this and maybe it would it would clear things up for other people too i am of an abundance mindset right there's enough to go around there's enough money to be and at the same time i know i'm a limited resource each one of us humans has you know on this planet at least has a limited time mm -hmm. therefore uh when a collector hits me up and goes hey i feel like you're going to saturate yourself you're putting too much out there isn't it there's like a little clinch in my heart going oh it's not about the money i, I want to put right this shit out yeah. i i want you guys to see more of this and if it doesn't sell so be it but if it's not good for the like exact for example like i want it to be good for the whale community for me to be also sought after not mm -hmm. saturated but every single piece has its own energy. Every single piece has its own life. Every single piece is limited. It's either one of one or three of three. I haven't done a 10 of 10 since the first one, but that 10 of 10 is already selling for 10 ETH for each one or something. Somebody sold it for three ETH and I think, and then a big fake in motion, somebody has it on sale for a hundred ETH right now. I hope I they get that. it. Yeah. I mean, they got, I mean, that shows the confidence that they have in the work, right? So the people who have you know called me and and said that I agree with them because at at some level I do agree with them because when I did like allow people to buy more in my flash sales in the first couple of days it did kill the long term of my flash sale the excitement wore oh. off 
Uh, so I have to find that balance. And if you guys can maybe give me some pointers on that, that would be great because my, my soul wants to do more. And it, again, it's not about the money. I've made great money in, in a month. Uh, you know, I'm not going to do the math, but 90 plus NFTs, you know, anywhere from one ETH to 10 ETH, I, I've done fairly well. Uh, yeah. so it's not about the money. It's about like the excitement. Like I haven't slept. I woke up eight, I woke up 3 p.m. yesterday and I still haven't gone to bed. It's just buzzing. You're just buzzing, just having a good time and talking and being all fit. Uh, Clubhouse last night was incredible. I don't know if you guys saw that room. I did catch some of it. Yeah. Mm. Did you? Nightmare. Yeah. Oh my god, man. We we did an impromptu. I was I took the kids out for dinner and for like to take the dogs out at a park and I just jumped on and I'm Mike, you want to jump on and let's let's do like a pre-party for this uh for this event like let's do a pre-talk before this show for t it was for today mm -hmm. and we jumped on and the next thing you know we have like 200 people and mc hammer shows up <laughs> and then my mic was on dude in the middle of it it was embarrassing my wife walks in and i'm washing dishes after cooking for the kids i'm like mc hammer is in my room and then i and hear, one, hear yeah gabe is like Bro, your your mic is. Like, there's 400 people watching me going. Is the hammers in the room? <laughs> like, and I look down because I hear Gabe in my ear going, "Dude, your your oh, mic is live." Shit. And I'm like, "Oh shit!" I'm like, "Sorry guys, I'm excited. What can I say?" You know, I got MC Hammer, and then uh, John Ledger came in, which is the I guess the CEO of XEU. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you know, he's amazing. Uh, global, yeah. And he was like, I love your work and I want to buy all of it. And, oh my gosh. and then and so it's like insane. And then and then I got distracted. John Ledger, I scrolled down and James Jean is, is in the room. You guys know James Jean? Why does that do sound so familiar? Jean, yeah, James. Uh, now I'm excited and I'm saying his name right. James Jean, artist. He does Mar he works with Marikami on projects, but he's so meticulous and amazing. Yeah, yeah, James Jean. He was in my room and I got to talk to James Dean. I've always been kind of like super, super impressed and in love with his work. Yeah. You know what? My friend uh, bought one of his pieces uh, two years ago. I remember she's like, should I get it? She's like, it's like an $800 print. But I really want I'm like, it's so dope. My computer's not. My so meticulous. Things, so. so like illustrative. So like beautiful. Like he takes... Like you see how much time he takes with his pieces. And then mm -hmm. when he does a print, it's like, you see, it's got dimension and he does the the different type of presses. And it's he wild. was in my room, we, we got to talk. Oh like, my gosh. When would I have been able to talk to, you know, MC Hammer, you know, John Ledger and James, <laughs> James Jean, Jean in, in, the same yeah. room. in the same room. And James Jean is like, yeah, I'm looking for collaborations. I was almost embarrassed oh to even want to collaborate with him, you know, but, oh. uh, you know, a guy like this, he, you know, he's very meticulous. Obviously, he's like, we really thought about what we were going to drop. Yeah. And, you know, that's that's another thing, you know, you guys like these guys come in and they do like one drop and it's like huge. And, yeah. you know, and then here I am like art for the world. You know, everybody, <laughs> have one. you get one, you get one, you know. But, but this stuff is like it's um, it's just pouring out of you, though. And I mean, there's. There's, um, you know, there's just different ways of going about it. Like, you know, it's coming through them and they're, they, they have like more of a um, thought process behind it and that's authentic for them. And what's yes. authentic for you is, is, is just this like overflow of, uh, I don't know, it's, it's just energy. Yeah, and, right. And I think the, the passion's contagious, obviously. Mm -hmm. And that's probably a big part of the following that, that you're growing. Um, two anecdotal things from last night's clubhouse room. I didn't catch the whole thing. I actually caught the end of it because um, I was dealing with some things that I was working on here and saw some members of our community who are actually other artists that are going to be interviewed in the next couple of weeks. They said, this, this clubhouse right now is just amazing. So like oh. the, the other artists are the one that called my attention to it. And, uh, you know, I hopped in and then I, you know, I was really stricken at the end by the amount of praise that everyone had for you for being so gracious and allowing everybody else this is your room to talk about what's happening and you're allowing this discussion and putting the spotlight on all these other artists so yeah. like you said in the beginning 
at your genesis of the stuff you're doing you were a community builder and you you know you put people together and you're continuing to do that but on on the discussion of scarcity yes you know i think i think scarcity is important but there's different ways to go about it right you like you can change the the medium and the collection and so you you build that excitement to the next thing and have that be a little bit different so um your objective like you said is not the money your objective right. is sharing with the world and i think there's a way to do that uh with a with a level of balance you know i i i philosophically i should i'm not, I'm not making the decisions for anybody i'm not a visual artist i shouldn't but i i think that when you people just come out with one of ones at exorbitant costs right you know you're you're excluding people that want to be involved so i think yeah. at the least it's good to have a balance so that you let people that want to support but aren't whales uh, right. a means to do so but you yeah. also have that vehicle to really continue your progressive growth and having scarcity you don't want to flood with all of the same thing but maybe if you change you know like you like you do collections and something that's a stark difference then it builds excitement versus what's already out there sure for example like this piece right here this love healing strokes piece um i i put this one out almost knowing that it might not sell i put it out at a low price i put a high volume because it's a it's a healing video like it was the intention of it was to have people in train connect to it with the music and you know again when i script people really connect to me scripting it's the action of me scripting that connects people other than just the fact of the script itself and even though there's no girl in it and it might some people might be alienated by it i just had to share this because i wanted it to be out there and to also showcase like a portfolio piece almost like it's here you know it wasn't an experiment to sell more of them for a low price it was more like here it is. If you guys feel it, if you guys connect to it, maybe later you will. Maybe later you'll understand when I explain it somewhere uh, and you might want it. But it's here to, for you to watch for free when you come back, right? So uh, that was the purpose of posting this one. And uh, I used to do a lot of these on, on my Instagram and Facebook, and I still will. Yeah. And I wanted to add, I mean, again, like I can't get you know, advice on, you know, the strategy necessarily. But since you asked, uh, you know, my intuition is that um, the scarcity comes from the uh, special energy that comes from each piece, like in the moment that you're creating it. So I feel like the volume of what you're putting out um, is, is offset by the fact that each piece is, um, special that there's like a different thing that's happening energetically you know you're 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 touching the canvas with your hands like um you know from we I, we haven't even gotten to the questions from the group but someone was asking like what what tools are you using and you know I, you're not using a ipad which is not to say that that's not oh real, yeah 80 80 percent of the work is ipads oh it is oh okay yeah, yeah. I mean, it looks, it looks like it's still actual ink, but I mean, I think you're still imbuing energy, whether you're working on an iPad or yeah, Michael has canvas. a story. He has Michael, uh, I, I'm not saying his full last name right now cause I can't, I'm blanking out, but I have him as Michael Rutt in my, in my book. And, uh, Mike bought six of my hand embellished prints, which are probably the originals were done in the iPad. About eighty percent of about a hundred percent of the work on known origin is is iPad, right? Other than the video process. Uh, well, that one, the the flower girl started as original on canvas, and then I edited it in iPad as well. Uh, but Mike has a story. One uh, actually, I have the story too. He texts me one night, and like he has six of them up on his wall in his bedroom, and he calls me, Mike. You're probably watching, going shit. He's telling the story again. I made him tell the story in front of everybody last night <laughs> <laughs> because he's not like a big, huge believer of like energy and frequency and all the stuff that we talk about. And he texts me, he goes, Hey, I, I know this is kind of weird. I, I don't know if it's appropriate that I'm asking you, but I was laying in bed and there's this 
like smoke kind of like ethereal thing happening in my room and it's like gray and white it looks like the northern lights in grayscale <laughs> is this normal and i'm like you just <laughs> just go with it man it's energy it's flowing through you know i've touched those pieces maybe you are clairvoyant or wow. maybe, you, maybe you can see energy versus like feel energy and he goes i go how do you feel he goes i'm excited and a little freaked out <laughs> And he, he tells a story and he says uh, he ended up like sleeping on his couch for the first couple of nights until he got used to it. And then he started feeling warm and fuzzy and and everything has gone very smoothly in his life. And then about two weeks later, we jumped on the phone and he's like, we got to do stuff on Clubhouse and let's get to this. And this NFT world is amazing. And he's doing all this stuff with nothing to gain. The guy has like one of the most incredible jobs as like a, you know, a, a partner and a company that works with like athletes and stuff and he's wow. giving giving us giving our group all his time to uh mo you know moderate our rooms and he's just incredible so and he's a collector and he's starting to collect nfts and support all this up and coming artists so everybody loves him and he's doing that too so i'm just lucky on so many different levels with all the people that are in my group and a lot of fun a lot of fun that's so cool yeah, so he sees energy now in, uh, in cloud form in his bedroom. And it, he's, mean, like, it's still there. I feel like, um, I mean, I I don't know, I, maybe you believe this too, just from what we've talked about, but I feel like, you know, every human is an artist and every human is a healer, has the capacity to be a healer. Um, we're all connected to this like a cosmic blanket of energy <laughs> that connects us. And um, I think it's it's really cool that your art is is um, bringing that out of people when they didn't even know or believe that, that yeah. it's something in them. Yeah, and when I do yeah. healings, I say belief isn't necessary because it's real. And I just need you to be open and, you know, just suspend your reality for a minute. <laughs> and then, you know- Just got go. chills. Oh my god my back is turning hot oh my god my arms tingling oh my god you know and it's great and it, uh this is butter by the way this this is a piece oops um this piece is actually was licensed and printed at 35 feet by 40 feet and it's attached to a garage by the pbs building in costa mesa uh you can yeah. see the video of that on my um, uh, if you go to my instagram and go to my reels reels and then scroll down so there's two things next to each other um the first one is right there with my face wow in front of yeah that's butter that's so cool yeah it must be such a feeling to see your work that ginormous that was crazy in real life that was really really wild it's wild and then if you exit out of that and scroll right like next to it uh, i think it's to this the flower one you see the flower one those yeah. are the flowers from uh from uh keys and color so they oh, built that for so me beautiful. they built that glass uh glass setup and then we printed i colored that in the ipad and procreate but that piece is hand painted and it's sitting in my house with the girl in the in the middle Mm. and we made that mural and uh, it's called wonder 2020 and, and yeah. these are going to be there for probably five to ten years i was gonna say i hope they keep that there forever yeah. the it's cool thing about gorgeous. this is i haven't been there at the right time but there's a time in the day where the sun will will go through that and it'll drop the flowers on the floor and it becomes oh, a walkway of colorful flowers so cool so i oh, gotta I'm go there go. yeah are you yeah. are you are you around here no no all the way on the around. east coast yeah well when you visit <laughs> i'll take you there myself oh i would love that that'd yeah. be fun um so i can't believe an hour and 48 minutes have elapsed um oh, and uh, this has been such a enlightening and like just exciting conversation to me Thank and like you. really affirming as an artist too um uh I have some questions from the group. I want to get okay. to them. Sure. Um, someone was asking, uh, who is the muse or the woman that you're modeling your art after? Oh, man. Oh. 
I got asked that question on Channel 5 News in the morning at like 7 a.m. And the guy's like, so who's this girl? They're all the same girl. And I'm like, well, actually, they're not the same girl. Uh, they're energetically picked up by probably whatever is in the ether. Like, and whoever is near me, I'll pick up on them. If it's a guy, I'll probably end up picking up their wife or daughter or mother. Uh, and it'll show up. It might look very similar to the other ones because it has these um, very signature things like, you know, the pouty lips and the long eyelashes. Mm -hmm. And before somebody asks why the long eyelashes, every time I just made them longer, I got more likes on Instagram. So, <laughs> so it's <laughs> yeah. just fun to draw. It's, it's know, just, just fun to draw. Good. My hand just kept going, you know, <laughs> it, was, it was really exciting. Uh, you know, a lot of them, a lot of people see my wife in them. Sometimes my mother shows up, you know, some personal stuff, but it's never like if you look at me, draw a girl and maybe I do one for you guys here. Oh my gosh. I mean, someone was like, when would you like to do a live art session with us? I mean, if you want to yeah, we'll do, do one that improv too now. Well, I'll just do a little improv too. I have paper here. Oh, so. that's this is kind wow. of hard to do and I'm looking sideways, but so this one will be for you, Heather. So I don't know. See it like. So energetically, they'll they'll like there'll be something in there, you know. You might see yourself, or you might see like your sister, or like somebody you know. You know what I mean? A best mm -hmm. friend, but it's not intentional, right? I mean, yeah. Sometimes they come out pissed off, and I'm like, oh shit, <laughs> you know. Um, I know it's hard to draw in that position too. So thank you for making no it work for the video. A little bit of script. It's amazing. I know some people are like, wow, it's so fast. Like, yeah. it must have taken, it's beautiful. Yeah, so that's her. I don't know if you know her, but that's... I might, if I look at her a little longer, but I don't want to, I don't want to like eat up the stream just staring. Like, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll send you a picture and then I'll send it to you. You just send me your oh, address thank you and so much. this one is for you. Oh my gosh, thank you. I'll send you these pieces. I'm not to cry. I don't know why I feel so emotional, but I do. Um, wow. Um, so what else do we have here? Uh, so someone else was asking, um, I have a couple questions here. Uh, what are your favorite programs or tools or brushes to use when creating digitally? Uh, I used to love Paper 53. The only reason why I stepped away from it was because of the quality that it was exporting at. So I kept having to um, having to vectorize my files. So like butter is entirely in paper 53, which was like a mm. low resolution file. So I had to vectorize that. And then because especially it was going to be 35 feet tall. Yeah, uh, I am a designer by trade and by history. So Illustrator was my favorite. Uh, so I love vectors. Um, but since I've been painting more and more digitally for the past four or five years. And again, I've been painting since the first iPhone on my phones. Uh, Procreate has been, been, by the way, big fake, the animation and the actual piece were done on my iPhone while sitting what? on the couch. Yeah. I could have wow. never imagined like making that much money on an iPhone doodle. I've made money on iPhone doodles, but that, that, that so piece, cool. yeah, that was, it was really cool. So I, I, I love procreate. Yeah. And then For you can see the forgot. process. If you see the, if you see the process video, you'll see it, yeah, which you guys saw multiple times, but that's just, that's just uh procreate capturing that, uh, automatically. Yeah. That, that program is so cool. How it right does there, that. Yeah, that one. Yeah. yeah. It just does it. And then, and then I know that, I know that it's going to be an animation. So I know where to lay down extra strokes. Mm. Like, and where to slow down because I've done this quite often to create videos from it. So some of this is on purpose that I, you know, so for people right. who want to create animations, if you can over, you know, think ahead of time that you want this to last like a minute, how to, how to do that is like to keep putting down layers and layers of blue, for example, in that one area, because it'll take a little bit longer for it on screen. 
So yeah, I love Procreate and I love my iPad Pro and I love my iPhone. I do have a Cintiq, 32 inch Cintiq here that doesn't get used enough. So I've promised myself to use it more often now. And uh, yeah, um, that's, that's, that's my tools. We have someone else asking if you've ever written graffiti. Uh, he said, he's, they said uh, he's the modern OG era. Like it does look kind of graffiti-ish. Like have yeah. you ever have I done, done graffiti? street art? Uh, one time I went to Canada and my friend said it was okay to draw on the walls. So I did. And then <laughs> I got contacted by the graffiti artists that I covered up their work, not knowing that there was rules. Uh oh, yeah. So actually he, he, he texted me on Instagram. I guess I'd covered a portion of his piece and I thought everybody was painting on each other's things. This was like a few years ago, yeah. but I called him. I called, he was like a gangster too. And I called him. I'm like, Hey bro, what's up? And he's like, <laughs> My did bad. you did you jack up my painting? Is that you? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, yeah, man. I'm really sorry. Can I make it up to you somehow? And I knew he was in Canada, so he because he wasn't gonna fly. Away. And Canadians are nice, so it's like yeah, a Canadian like, gangster. Oh, excuse me. You, yeah. you. I can't imagine how that sounds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, hey, hey, friend. Uh, yeah, I, I totally <laughs> apologize. I didn't know the rules, so. <laughs> Yeah, I, mm. I, I, you know, ever since when I started painting and really getting into it, uh, I had kids and a family, so I never had the luxury of having to go to jail, you know? <laughs> so, I just I just didn't. It would have been I wanna, cool. But... I want to make sure I ask this because it's been asked of me to follow up with you several times. Sure. But people have, have kind of, um, they were riding with you for this journey of the past month that you talk about a little bit here. And they're excited about what you're doing and kind of vicariously, you know, getting some of that adrenaline. And, and they've asked, you know, what would be your advice to new artists trying to get into NFTs and trying to make a mark from them in this space when there's such a deluge of people coming in? I think come in, uh, you know, come in, don't wait. That's my first thing. Don't try to strategize too much. Don't try to think about what you're doing. Come in, make your mistakes, uh, post whatever you can. Uh, as Whale Shark also told me, it doesn't matter where you are, try to be everywhere. You know, he he bought my work on OpenSea and he bought my work on Known Origin, you know? And when I asked him, is it okay to dilute myself in that way and be on different spaces? And he said, no, be everywhere, you know? Maybe not put too much everywhere, but have a presence. So like. Today, I put up one on Zora. You know, I put a one of one for 10 ETH just to have a presence. You know, when people look for me, they can find me there and it's a unique one of one. Um, that's one thing. Two, uh, don't wait for to be accepted into one of the, one of the you know, the big boys. And right now, they're, they're, there's probably like a 3,000 waiting list. By the time you get in, you've missed your opportunity to create and share and have a good time in this process. Uh, three, think in series. I, you know, I have a natural, uh, my work is probably naturally a series, like on its own. Yeah, I have the more basquiat stuff like you see here, like Obsessed or, you know, Quarantine Magic, my more crazy stuff. Uh, but my girls are my girls. So like people know them. So I don't have to try hard to have a series, right? But I tell people like, if you have photography, I feel like photography right now is difficult to break through. So combine it with something fun, you know, doodle over your photo and put a UFO in the sky and, you know, say, or, you know, do, do a whole series of like UFOs in your photos. Right. And from a conceptual standpoint, it gives it another layer. It gives us some interest and it, it adds a little cleverness that people want to engage in. Whereas a, you know, a photo from the beach might not be as engaging, right. Uh, show a little bit more of yourself here. Those are some of the basics. Uh, pricing strategy, again, don't price yourself too low right off the bat. Don't put a whole lot of the first one or the second one. You know, uh, there is, even though I am sharing a lot, I really, it's a little deceiving. I'm not. Like if you look at my structure, there's maybe one a day, but there's only like one or two of those available. Whereas I could be flooding the market by putting about 50 pieces. I have, again, I'm very organized. I have probably over about 4,000 paintings, all digitally put together, ready to go anytime I want. I can license them. I can, I've, I've been prepped for this, you know, the licensing game. And I'm so glad, by the way, that I don't have to ever worry about trying to be licensed ever again, because licensing itself alone 
which becomes the pie in the sky dream for most artists. And I've been licensed. Uh, it's it's really difficult, especially with Pixel Pop. I got a licensing deal, and uh, I was on backpacks and stuff. And I have a really cool story. I was up at four in the morning, three nights ago. Did you hear about the story? No, no. Um, I just was going to remind you that you were like, I wanted to talk about Pixel Pop too, I do and why wanna... you're burning your bunnies. Uh, burning bunnies, and I spilled the water. Um, so three nights ago, I was watching the movie. I wasn't watching the movie. I was on Facebook for one second, and I see somebody posting a picture of a movie with somebody holding a pixel pop bag, uh, lunchbox, lunch bag, in the movie, the movie Moxie. And he goes, I guess Sabit's uh, art made it. And this kid that put it has a Stitch Bunny, first Stitch Bunny tattoo from 15 years ago on his belly. That's crazy. His name is Jay. And Jay's like, dude, your work is in a movie. And I look and I'm like, oh my God, they're using a bag in the movie. And uh, so I went and watched the movie Moxie and by like 12 minutes in, there's a good like five seconds of her messing with the bag. It was really cute. But at the same time, I'm going to reach out and then they have to rectify that, you know? Yeah. There's like, there's like a great part, but then I found out that they do need to ask permission and pay for it. But that was a licensed bag. It was a wonderful uh, opportunity. I made a decent amount of money. But again, when that license goes away and you're you're not a businessman to consistently go after licenses, uh, the, the project dies, right? So I'm really happy about this space too, because now you don't have to, you skip this licensing line as well, because none of us are big enough for a company to take a big company to take a chance on us. They would rather do Mickey Mouse versus Stitch Bunny, you know? So here, you know, I get a chance to bring uh, Pixel Pop back again. So Pixel Pop is, I don't want to call it a brand, you know, uh, I call it a world. Let's call it a world. So Pixel Pop is the world where Stitch Bunny and friends live. There's also other characters that will be coming, like mini vamps. They're like tiny little vampires that like tomato juice. They don't drink blood. That sounds adorable. There's hyper kawaii girls. These you know cute girls, which is like, and there's you know there's key there's Tigro and Draco and uh, all that stuff. I'm actually working on a six foot painting of Pixel Pop for the president of Zynga right now, and this is like yeah I got to show you guys a picture. It's pretty cool. And, and so like Pixel Pop was like my first passion as I got, I told you guys. So uh, when the pandemic hit, I started the Pixel Pop Academy. So pixelpopacademy.com. I did three months of classes once a week for kids at about 30 kids every week. And then it just got like really hard to do and keep up because it wasn't scaling for me. Again, the business part comes in and I, you know, I can't do all of it. Mm. So yeah, if you go to Pixel oh. Pop, yeah, that one right Hi. there. You were there. So yeah, so there's 30 classes there that are available. And wow. I'll, I'll, wow. can I give a secret code to everybody? This yeah. is 59 bucks a month. But if you use all capital letters, family love, you I'm can take so all the classes good. for free forever. I'm going to put that in the chat too. Yeah, do it. all caps. Classes. That is incredibly generous of you. Thank you Thank so, you so much, much for sharing that. So yeah. No problem. It's there. I mean, I I learned a lot about myself in this one. I I learned that by the third class when I put the reason why I have the setup is because of that. The the microphone and the headphones and stuff. I remember like I did one class and I was like, "Hey guys, draw the ears like this and draw the eyes." By the fourth class, I was like, "Oh my god, his eyes are so big." And <laughs> And I had the kids like rolling, I guess, on the other side because I wasn't seeing them. And I told my friend, I'm like, look, I got like super animated. It was so much fun. And he goes, oh, so the real Addy came out? I'm like, yeah, I guess, you know. <laughs> so it, it was just so much fun to do this. And I was on Channel 9 News talking about it. And uh, it was, this was kind of like my next thing. Like I was going to do something huge with this. And yeah. And it was fun. It was fun, but it was, it started becoming, you know, it was harder and harder to keep new content coming because I was painting as well and I wanted to keep it fresh. So I think there's enough content for somebody to just go back and have a good time. And yeah. uh, what I got a lot of, out of it was this was during the major time of uh, lockup. So a lot of the kids would go to their parents and say, I feel better. I don't feel lonely anymore my anxiety levels are down or I don't feel picky or whatever the, the way they explained so it. 
uh, my kids helped like moderate the chats. It was really fun. It was really, really fun. And I found out a lot about myself as well and what Pixel Pop can be because I had kind of stopped. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, with Pixel Pop kind of coming back now, I feel like I have a whole nother life to it that I can give. So while I slow down on the Sabit side, I will be doing more and more uh, Pixel Pop stuff. Uh, and the reason why I'm burning some bunnies today <laughs> or tomorrow at 8 a.m. is because I, find it in all the tabs. Uh, yeah, I on purpose allowed 25 bunnies for the Genesis piece. I only have this 3D model that somebody, some amazing artist did for me years ago, 12, like 2012. And so there's, there's 25 of them available and, uh, I'm giving, you know, since they're not moving fast and I think it's a super, super valuable piece and it's going to be part of a huge history of what's to come for Pixel Pop, uh, I decided to like, you know, take them off the table if people aren't moving on it, you know, mm -hmm. I just kind of, but three people <laughs> have bought them. So I like the edition number two, 300, 300. That's kind of cool. Yeah. And you're going to, so you're going to burn the ones that didn't sell is what yeah. you're saying. Tomorrow at yeah. 8.22 AM. I have made, yeah. I might have to treat myself. I don't know. Yeah. And I have to try <laughs> to keep them at a, and then there's the one of one. And I kept that on my website again as the super Genesis one, which is the white background. And that is one is that, like, that's not on known origin, right? That's on known origin under oh. the Sabbath tab under this is, you're on the pixel pop. So if you go to Sabit and you go to collections, he is, he's got a white background under love script. There he is. Oh, so okay. he's just one oh one, mm. and he's 25 ETH. Again, setting up, setting up like history. He's like, please don't set me on fire. Don't yeah. set my brothers on fire. Oh uh, yeah. And you know, what's <laughs> weird is I never thought about that until today when a, a, a a collector kind of gave me the idea. It wasn't like my thing to burn things. Mm. Um, and I don't like the word burn, but it fits so well because I caught that one, the fire edition. Oh, that's funny. Isn't that weird? Like I didn't yeah. do that on purpose. So we're going to set them up. You, know. you got to follow it's... the, you got to follow those signs that keep showing yeah. up, like the pie symbol that popped up before the call yeah. and all that. Yeah. Yeah. That was weird too. My finger just, I, I'm, I don't even know how to do that on a keyboard. <laughs> Here. Anyways, any other questions that I need to answer for these for the um, side? No, I think we covered them as we were speaking. So, um, but yeah, Pixel Pop will yeah. will be living on, and and now I, I'm I have there's a huge purpose to keep it going, and I, I have so many different ideas with Pixel Pop now because you know we we got animation, we got package toys. You know, I love when they put them in the 3d package toys and then of course the true self is to draw him any way i want and share him and instead mm. of pulling from i will probably share some from the archives uh but i do want to start drawing uh, and sharing new stuff again too and see how it's changed uh since i've been doing so much more rapid firework with the yeah. japanese brush what does stitch money look like now what does he feel like now yeah Will we be oh. seeing these guys in the uh, in the metaverse and crypto voxels and you know um, pets in some of these VR experiences? Oh my God, I gotta learn all that stuff. And then yeah, of course, <laughs> I would love that. I, the possibilities are, are crazy. Like I don't even know much about those those ver the, the metaverses. Mm -hmm. I bought some land in Super Super World. I okay. bought the co I bought the coffee shop that I that, that I go to go been going to for twenty years. Cool. No, nobody's gonna want it, but I bought it because I was like, at least I own this it's this special. place my business started. And, and then I bought this little area in uh, right by the Capitol, and it was like a, it looked like an A from the top. It was like a really cool building. Later, I, when I googled it, I found that it's a museum. So it was like really like I was like <laughs> I, own, I own a museum. It's so cool. Yeah. So yeah, I would like to get them into different worlds for sure. Well, I'm excited to see what how Stitch Bunny evolves and what you're creating next um, under Sabet. And um, 
I just want to thank you so much for being so generous in spirit with your wisdom, um, with your strategies and tactics and just sure. thank you so much. And, Anytime. Yeah. Anytime. And if anybody ever needs anything, for sure, I'm, I'll, I try to answer almost every DM that comes through. And uh, if I can't do a collaboration, I'll try to like hook you guys up with some cool people to do collaborations with. And that's it. Thank you so um, much for having me, Nightmare. Heather, I was going to ask you about your HD at the end. It's Heather Hertz, yeah, uh, because I'm the into, I'm the frequency very. You're yeah, I saw that. <laughs> I was like, she'll understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The frequency, yeah. Yeah. I, I seriously can, you know, I'll do a, a activation for you later if you want to see how it feels, and maybe you can tune into it and and let me know. So absolutely offline. Yeah. So, Oh, That'll wow. I just got so excited. Yeah. Thank you just, so much yeah. for this privilege. Really, it was, so, it was an thank honor. Thank you, guys. I'm, I'm so honored to be a part of this collection, to be a part of this family. And uh, it, my life has changed for good. So, and my family. Yeah. Well, we were, we were super excited to speak with you today. Two hours has flown by. Yeah. And I, I don't even think we wanted to end, no. um, but we don't, we don't want to uh, drain you dry now because I'm sure you're going to have a lot of exciting projects for us to bring you back in down the road. So yeah, again, definitely. on behalf of the community, thank you so much for your generosity with your time, with your codes, with everything you continue to do. And um, where would you like people to reach out to you? Is it Twitter? Is it Clubhouse? It seems like uh, Twitter and Instagram seem to be the place to send messages if they would like to and follow there. And, uh, and then on Clubhouse, I, I'm popping in and out. We don't have like set rooms and I just find it more natural to just, you know, come into different rooms and say hello. So yeah, I think Excellent. Be it. thank you guys. You guys made my day and made, oh. my, made my year, made my life, the rest of my life. So The feeling yeah. is mutual. This has been yeah. a really amazing talk and um, yeah, thank you so much, and uh, just stick around for a second after we sign off. And for uh, sure. Anyway, thank you, Whale Fam, for your great questions, for your presence, and have a magical day, everybody.